Hello everyone, welcome to Drop Frames. For Europeans, at least for the next two weeks, we're gonna be an hour early every week. So you get to see us, uh, you know, it's it's a special gift. We're really happy about it. We're excited about it. Just like our guest today who's not here, but he's still on time because Daylight Saving Times has not affected uh, Australia yet. So he's gonna join us. I don't have eyes. Everything's just in complete disarray. <laughs> Welcome to Drop Frames. Zeke's oh back. God! It, am I like Event Horizoning right now? Is that yes? <laughs> what is the line that he says in Event Horizon? Uh, I forget what it was. Where we're going, we won't need eyes. I think that's or right. eyes to see or something. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Uh, Zeke, welcome back. How was the break? How was Baltimore? I'm sorry, Zeke is not here right now. Oh. In his place, he has put a recording because oh. he is still in bed for another hour. Oh, okay. Um, that's that's totally valid. <laughs> no, Baltimore was great. Um, I mean, it's as good as Baltimore gets. <laughs> Which, uh, happened, like, how good would you say? Like, where we would... It, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> uh, we went to... Uh, the reason why we went there is because it was my, my lady's birthday, and uh, she lived there for many years. And we went to visit her old haunts, like her old favorite places. Like we went to her favorite bagel place, favorite coffee place, you know, breakfast, you know, all that kind of stuff. We went to the aquarium. Nice. Uh, we went to we went to D.C. I'd never been to D.C. before, so we went to D.C. And we walked around. I went to we, time kind of got away from us. We were going to do more Smithsonian stuff, but uh, time kind of got away from us. We, we it, by the way. If you go there, like to DC, and you want to do rent a fucking get a scooter or one of those like fucking city bikes or something like that, yeah. like seriously, because it we like it was walked like eight miles, <laughs> like around the whole like you know everywhere, yeah, and it was just like I didn't need to walk that much, <laughs> like it would have been just fine on a scooter, nice, which I wish I would have done. Also, I'm overweight and my feet hurt. Anyways. So time kind of got away from us. So we went to, we only had one Smithsonian that we could go to oh. um, with the time remaining. We had like an hour left of the day. So we went to the U S history museum and saw some like, you know, U S Americana shit yeah. Edison. And we saw Julia Child's of uh, uh, kitchen that they recreated, you know, that kind of shit. Did you do it was the, really fun. Uh, did you do the wire tourist uh, adventure? Is that a thing? No, that's a joke. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised, like, if they took us on a tour of, like, this is where, uh, you know, Omar, like, was you know, shooting people, like, that would be a, and this is, a, you know, be, this is Amsterdam. Be, like, yeah. <laughs> it'd be rough. Uh, it'd be a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be a little scary sometimes, too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, yeah, so, no, I, I didn't do that. But, yeah, we did, we did lots of fun stuff. And, uh, uh. I took a picture of the Washington Monument up my up my butt, so that was fun. Nice, a beautiful America Excellent. Uh, trip. Yeah, just ten out of ten. Yeah, and all and American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Co, did you go on any uh, big trips the past week? Baltimore, D.C., anything like that? You know, tour the U.S. No. Oh. Mm. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Kind of kind of boring over here. <laughs> Got some trees. You got some trees? Got some trees. That's about it. Mm. Wait, hold. We're this... actually going to have to be doing that soon. Yeah. Are you saying cut or got? I don't know if this is a rich person thing or an everyday person thing. Gut. That's the, that's both words combined, Co. That doesn't <laughs> make sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just got, we got, a, we got some seedlings that we, uh, oh, okay. since I wouldn't really call it a rich person thing, I actually I thought you went and got like trees treated. from somewhere no, else not like giant and trees. transplanted yeah, no, 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 them no. to just, your property. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, um, we're putting up like, uh, some, some blockers and stuff for neighbors and things like that. So got it. Okay. Just a row of trees. So you never have About to see your neighbors. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Works out. It works out. Uh well now we get to do a 40-ish, 50-ish minutes of things that we can talk about that Skill Up wouldn't have an opinion on or want to talk about. 
That's going to be the show here for the next little bit while he uh, wakes up. It's 4 a.m., by the way, at least. I think it's 4.11 right now in, uh, in Australia. So he was already waking up early for us. And then he's waking up even earlier now. Uh, but yeah, they call it like 40 minutes of stalling, but uh, we could talk Zeke's favorite things, and that's Path of Exile and Path of Exile related things that uh, that Co brought up to me earlier called Last Epoch. Oh, yeah. Uh, you were, you were trying to sell me on this game and we, I silenced the conversation and said, let's save it for the show. Uh, so what, what is the, this whole thing? The news is that, uh, last epoch hit like 0.9. Uh, they're still not at 1.0 yet this past week. Uh, it was the multiplayer patch and they did a bunch of like sponsored streams around it. And I think they got you addicted. Yes. Okay. Why? What? What is it about so, this game that that has gotten you addicted? I'll pull up some bots. So first of all, it's not done. And it has some bugs. Okay. Um, but the thing I like about it is it. I feel like um, you know how we've actually talked in the past about and I, well, me specifically, and most long term Path of Exile fans then took out the crosses and attempted to banish me. But I've I've spoken about how I kind of wish Path of Exile would have um a way to like load a build into the game. And it would kind of like show you, you know, where it goes, or at least suggest things. I wish that sure. whole experience was a little bit more guided. Uh, and I feel like in a lot of ways, I feel like in a lot of ways, Lost Epoch is an ARPG like Path of Exile, except it's taken a lot of the lack of approachability that Path of Exile is kind of famous for and done something about it. So the Go crafting quick. is more, yeah. If I may, if you want to pronounce it correctly. It's epoch. It's it's epoch. <laughs> they actually say it in the game as epoch, and I and I oh, do. Oh, so they it, this pronounce it in the game. Thing. Yes, apparently okay. in there there are there's a British accent in okay. the game, and apparently in Britain it is pronounced epoch, and then is in it? America and other places it's pronounced epoch or ep epoch, yeah. like with a u. So I, yeah. I do know, and yeah, I I actually went like if you Google it and look and Google mm -hmm. the word epoch, it's it's pronounced epoch. But because it's a British accent in the game, they actually say in the game, e -pop. Like, they say it like oh, that. Wow. So, okay. It's it's a thing. Anyway. Um, so it, so bad. The thing, I hate it. So it's the show I'm about bad, the Chrono Trigger airship. The devs are apparently huge fans. And, like, there's even a zone in the game called the End of Time. So, I mean, like, it, it, there's oh. there's clearly some Chrono oh, Trigger nice. influence okay. in the game. All right. Um, just lead with basically, that next like, time. I might check it out. This, for instance, you get five. There's a, You get a bunch of skills. You get you get subclasses, you get a base class, and then they all get skills. And then like here, you can pick five of them, and every single skill has something like that, which is like a big spider web of ways to enhance it or change it or give it additional stuff. Um, you also have a passive skill tree for your main class and your subclass. Um, and it's basically it it feels like Path of Exile if Path of Exile were actually approachable. <laughs> That's that's what Fair. this game is. I'm playing without any kind of a guide, and I and I'm having a good time with it. And um and it's and it's it's just it's really fun. The way that items and crafting is done is super intuitive. So an item has like a, a this thing called forgeability, which is like a number like 28, and then you get all these shards that are all sorts of affixes, uh, prefixes and suffixes, and you can just add them on based on how much forgeability a weapon has left. And there's like modifiers and stuff. And there's some RNG if you want to do it. But it makes it so, it is so much easier. And you can just do this wherever you want. You don't need to be a station or anything. You just do it whenever you want. So it makes it so it's so much easier to like make builds or fill in gaps in your build. If you need like more health on hit, or if you need like more health regen or mana regen or, or certain resistances. So it's uh, it's just, the, the TLDR is, it's a much, it's an ARPG that has in many ways the depth of Path of Exile, but is so much more approachable and just, easier to deal with in like a casual way so yeah i'm only i've only been playing it for 10 ish hours and i still have a huge amount to learn and a huge amount to um to you know go in and and, and figure out uh, i also also apparently the end game is oh this is a totally different thing we can talk about um see all those down down votes <laughs> yeah why is but, it being uh, downvoted to hell well let's finish oh, your hell. thought and then we'll yeah. talk about but anyway that. it's it's a lot of fun and and i and it really i was expecting to do this people have been asking me to play last epoch for the longest time Same. and i and i've always just kind of put it off and when the sponsor stream came along i was like okay finally a reason you know let's just do it let's figure it out let's see what this game's all about and sure enough it's a really solid well-made arpg um i'm very much looking forward to 1.0 it's going to be nice because you can play it now 
and then you know learn a little bit about it and then diablo 4 will come out and we can get all exhausted with that and then the 1.0 is supposed to release like towards the end of the year so mm. uh i'm uh, it, it's yeah it works out pretty well so here's like the character passive tree and then you can see there's three subclasses and you can even spec into parts like halfway points in the subclasses you don't pick so that means there's like even more stuff that you can do with your build if you want to um and yeah, I'm my current my current class is a spin to wins type thing, but I've changed it up like three or four times, and I've spec'd into Void Knight, which has its own thing, and it's uh it's been cool, it's been very cool. How come your character doesn't have like like f flaming wings and like <laughs> you know like like uh, sparks and shit like flying out of it at all times? Like your guy looks because he's not he's not powerful. Yeah, he's not powerful. That's <laughs> why. No, the real reason is, is first of all, this is a buy to play game. So you do, you do spend, I think it's uh, what, 35, 25 or $35. Um, I, I, it, it's not that expensive, but there is also going to be a cosmetic cash store in the game that is not in yet. Uh, they do have as part of their like tenants, a pledge to never do anything outside of cosmetics on their store. Wow. So um, it's, it, the store will always be cosmetic because the game again is buy to play. So it, it's not like a, a, a free to play game. So that's not where their main money comes from. But yeah. That's where they are with that. And the store is not in the game yet, which is why I don't have giant flaming wings and, you know, awesome fire swords. Okay. Oh, that's a yeah. big inventory. Yeah, your inventory is huge. You have a bank as well. Uh, there's a built-in loot filter that you can, like, very easily set your own rules. You can also import your own rules if you want to. Um, yeah, hmm. it's very, it, it's it's super QOLE and intuitive. So if, if gold, this... Gold auto picks up, doors auto open when you run through them. Wow. Like, the oh, technology oh, exists. Oh, oh, oh. That's wild. The technology, I know, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if this is 0.9, what is not in the game yet? If 1.0 is, isn't the, there? Um, the big, they have a big trading system on the way. Apparently they're, they're saying it's going to be huge and innovative and that's coming later. Uh, also, the last act of the main story is not in. And I, and I can't talk too much about this yet, but I hope to next time we, we chat about it, maybe next week. Um, the end game apparently is not fully done yet either. There, there are like three things to do in the end game. The main one being a mapping style system. Oh. Um, but I, I, from what I understand, that stuff is not really fully in yet. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's also more, a couple more subclasses for a few uh, classes that are planned as well. Oh, okay. So some of the classes just, how many classes are there in total? Four or five? There are five subclasses. And I think the goal is to have each class then have three subclasses. Oh, so five classes with three subclasses, you mean? I think. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I would assume that's and right the now. Standard, some of them are missing. The standard fare of like fighter, rogue, cleric. Yep. There's a there's Sork. rogue, sentinel, uh, primalist, which is a shaman that can kind of go into okay. a druid or that kind of thing. There's an acolyte, which is kind of like a lich necromancer thing, and then a, a mage. Got it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, performance wise, runs well. Runs great. I've, I've had no issues with performance. It's it's been running fine, and all that's good. From appearances, it looks more uh, like Diablo 2-y than, than Path of Exile Zoom Zoom. Does that change or is yeah, this? Not really. No, okay. it's 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 pretty much like this. There's not like a, most movement skills have cooldowns. Um, there's not huge groups of enemies. So it's 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 got a, a bit of a slower feel to it. Now, of course, again, I, I have to keep mentioning it. This may change as you go further into the game, but yeah, so yeah. far it's been a much kind of slower, more methodical fare than a, than a, you know, frantically flying through maps POE experience. What, what is the like level cap? Is it a, I don't know. Okay. Somebody in chat could probably answer that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's a hundred, if it's standard or, or what, do you know how long it takes to get through a campaign generally? Uh, oh, level cap is a hundred. Thank okay. you chat. And, uh, no, I don't as I've not finished it. And I, and I'm really taking my time with it. Like I, I, yeah. I'm playing just to learn my class and level it and stuff like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not flying to end game or anything like that right now. I think one of the bigger that'll all come later. One of the bigger detractors for folks to play POE every single league is they have to redo it. Have they commented on that? Is there a do you have to know. redo the story every single time? They like are there going to be resets? Have they talked about any of that? I have no idea. Okay, I'm a very new last epoch player, so I, you know, I'm. I'm Definitely getting into it, but uh, all all that kind of stuff, I'm not sure. Okay. Jazz uh, somebody chats says they will have seasons. Okay. Yeah, they have cycles is what they call them there. There you go. So, but seasons will begin after 1.0, it looks like. Huh. All right. Do you think this has... Saying there are ways to skip story. Oh. Interesting. I hope non-monetary ways. <laughs> well, uh, I would assume so. I would so. assume so because they, of what they, uh, they said. Again, their testament is that cosmetics only will be in the store. So if, yeah. if I'm sure if they were to start doing tomfoolery like 
pay to skip that that would the community would most likely riot yeah they're saying there's like dungeons to do skip parts for the story so that's kind of oh, interesting cool. how they're handling that it seems I've like dungeons on the map but i haven't done them yet okay it, it it does seem like all of the conversation around poe they were able to kind of like pick and choose the things that they're able to tackle uh and implement those into this game so that's that's a cool thing uh let me ask you this do you think it has enough from what you've seen and what what interest that you've seen both in your sponsored stream and just the community in general does it have enough to like exist on its own or is this going to be the game that you play when poe and and diablo are like off season there are things i like about this game more than path of exile yeah and i think that if the devs keep pouring time into it and they and they keep growing it out that it it absolutely could be a parallel experience just like diablo and poe um like i i think that it's it's a very cool system it has some some great systems to it uh of course longevity i i couldn't answer that at all it would all it would all really depend on how much they put into it and how much more they you know there is to do i mean you know it's it's not a grim dawn where you just basically get you're done with it and then it's you know one and done but it is a buy to play game so you know that's going to be like as a buy to play game with only a cosmetic shop at some point they're going to go okay we need to go make our next buy to play game you know and at that point is it going to be like grim dawn or just kind of like you know you're done you have your few characters and that's it uh or is it going to be like a living thing like path of exile in which case i think it very well could turn into a grim dawn where it's like oh if you played grim dawn cool you played it okay well then you're done with it you know that kind of thing yeah so it, it's kind of up to the devs in terms of of how much how many resources they want to put into that to make it whatever they want it to be right yeah i'm i'm very curious with it being like a buy to play game if they if they are doing the cycle or the seasons uh which it seems like they are what those cycles or seasons look like in terms of adding to the game and like where they continue to make the money for that or if they're just gonna rely on the the the, the buy the 30 dollar buy and, and see if that's enough that I don't know. We'll we'll see how that works out. We will definitely have to see. I'm I'm as interested as you are in most of those questions. Right. Um someone in my chat said they're going to offset the cycles with PoE so it's likely mid-season for PoE when they launch their cycle. That's just smart. That's smart. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um and then it becomes a question of you're not choosing. It's just like why not both? Right. Right. Man, you do have a lot of uh, inventory space. That was the first thing that mm -hmm. kind of surprised me. Looks like the same equipment. The camera nice and wide out too. Yeah. Looks like the same equipment pieces as PoE. Kind of very similar very UI similar. there. There's a lot of standard ARPG in the game for sure. Um, and then it, it has its little hints of flavor here and there. That's That part on the top right there is your idle section, which are basically passive buffs. And as you go through side quests, you unlock that whole region and you can slot items in Tetris style to then like have different a passive like matrix buff system essentially. It's very like sync to me in a lot of ways. Huh. Well, I'll keep an eye on it. I I, I was telling my chat I'll probably jump in whenever 1.0 comes out. Um because mm -hmm. like trading doesn't exist in the game, right? Not yet. Nope, not really. Yeah. Not really, no. Okay. I, I wonder how that affects I, I guess everyone's playing SSF uh because of that at this point in the game. Uh is there a hardcore mode uh already there in There is. Okay. You can do that if you want to, for sure. Cool. Is there, uh, someone said there's an, is there an auto sort button for the, uh, yes, inventory? there's auto sort. Yep. That's helpful. That, that, yep. That might a lot of little QL goodness. Yeah. Might be the trick. Yeah. For, some people. for sure. <clears throat> huh. Okay. All right. That's, uh, it's, it's very PoE. There's enough little stuff where I would say, like, especially with how much you play PoE, I would say give it a try. Yeah. So even if you just play it for a stream, just, you know, see if it has stuff you're interested in. Yeah. Zeke, does this do anything for you? Are you... Uh, apparently, I've played it. <laughs> like, this game has been out for a while, yeah? Yeah. It's been <laughs> yeah. Probably, like, it really, five years. Like, released in early access in 2019. Mm -hmm. It's actually coming up on, yeah, April. April of 2019 is when it was released in early access, I guess. And I apparently, I've, I've played almost two hours of it. So, probably go. for an indie day, maybe? I don't know, man. Maybe. But it, yeah, it the last time windy. I played it was May 2020. That's the only, that's the time that I played it. Huh. That would have been yeah. nine months ago. Or no, 2020. Okay, never mind. That's 2020, three years. yeah. That's at least yeah. three years ago. Yeah. Wow. 
Huh. I All looked right. it up. I was like, oh, let me look it up on Steam. It's like, you own this. I was like, I do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, apparently a uh, friend of the show, Zizzerin, Ziz, Ziz, made a video Ninja. called Things Last Epoch Does Better. And apparently um, that may be something to check out if you're interested on getting up. If you're a PoE player wanting a more thorough breakdown. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. What else has been going on? I know you guys both watched the streamer awards last night. You were glued to the screen. Couldn't get enough of it. What was right? that last night? Yeah. The streamer awards did. They, it's, you know, there's the streamer awards and then the Oscars. Two big events for both of you uh, that I know you're watching very closely every single year. Love it. Can't get enough of it. Zeke, what are you looking Dude. up? I could just tell you. I watched it in full. <laughs> no, I know. Stream, I'm just, stream. I'm, I'm. Go ahead, Co. Go ahead. I was going to say, Stream Wars has gotten big. It had like uh, 250K-ish, I want to say, watching it. Like most of the major IRL streamers and, and those guys were there. A lot of YouTube folks were there as well. Um, they had, it's, 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 oh, 340K on the mainstream. Damn. There you yeah. go. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, shout out to uh, to QT. She she pulled off a big show, and apparently it is huge. Yeah, I was. And of gonna... course, the main the main goal LSF was flooded with clips this morning, so <laughs> that's that's how I knew it had happened last night, which is awesome. Right. Um. Yeah. So good stuff. I don't. And apparently, a huge win for all involved. I know that they allowed restreaming this year, uh, as long as uh, it was if you selected. weren't invited. Well, no, if you. So what? She, I could have restreamed because I wasn't invited. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But what what uh, QT re re respectfully requested of her audience is if you were invited and didn't come, please don't restream unless you are like selected, like yeah. moist critical and a few others like that. And somebody was like, wow, that sounds ridiculous. Why would you do that? And she said pretty bluntly, and I completely understand why she was like, because I don't want to encourage people to not come just so they will stay at home and restream it. Makes That's sense. Like, that makes sense like that's you know that makes sense so yeah, yeah. that's uh and, and of course she's not she's not gonna dmca people she's just saying please don't um, yeah and it looks like almost every major streamer respected it which was kind of awesome so, i mean most of them were there for sure that's true um yeah. the, the 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 winner of uh of streamer of the year though kai was not uh for whatever reason he did not uh attend but pretty much like everyone that is of that type of streamer that frequents LSF or is frequently on LSF was pretty much there in person. Um, mm -hmm. And so it, it seems like a, a rather another successful event. They had a, compared to last year, uh, there were, there were two pretty big changes. One, they were sponsored out the wazoo this year. Last year they had yeah. like fansly and like a couple smaller sponsors this year. The pre-show was brought to you by AT and T. They had a step and repeat that had like, God um, damn. They had a step and repeat that had like Twitch and uh, AT and T behind it, and like all of the presenters. Now I don't know if this was part of the sponsor or if they provided wardrobe, but they were wearing like Dolce and Gabbana and like crazy, crazy uh, outfits in terms of just money spent on that. Um, Spotify apparently was there too. KFC as well. Yeah, Spotify was go. on that step okay. and repeat. That's right. KFC did a full Out of on. Boom. KFC did a weird. So they sponsored. They kind of went the Keeley route. And sponsors were sponsoring awards. And one of the ah. awards was, and I forget which ones, it, it was for like uh, Rising Star whew, and three other awards. And essentially it was a goof, right? So they like cut to Ludwig, who was in the audience, and he had a bunch of KFC on his um, table that they had like ordered through DoorDash or whatever. Um, and so then they cut to a sponsor plug and it was like, it, it was a poker table and he doubled down. The KF the double down sandwich from KFC. And so then mm -hmm. they go back to the awards. And for the next four awards, if you won, you could take the it was either three thousand or four thousand dollars, or double it down for the next award. And so everyone doubled it down. And so the fourth award was like twenty four thousand or something like that. Um, and they doubled it down again, and then the KFC gave away. 50,000 double downs to chat. They put up a QR code and said like, here's free food, use it. And so like <laughs> kind of a cool sponsor cool. thing, Yeah, but it's also cool. just like, 
I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they, they, it's it's a money making endeavor, right? It's not just yeah. a prestigious endeavor. Hey, it's so. PR. It's PR. Yeah. It's PR. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but honestly, it's like if Crisco was a sponsor, it's like we're giving away fifty tubs of Crisco. Who wants it? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, weirdly uh, enough, I, uh, what am I going to do with that? Said, like, if Double Town is just like, I don't know what you, to do with this. Are you trying to kill me? <laughs> if you order a KFC sandwich from their app, you get a free Diablo Four closed beta code. That's correct. Yes, if you and you, mm-hmm. the thing is, is you have to use oh. the app to order it. Uh, to, and that way, it's on your phone, and they can give you notifications and stuff. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so US of, only. A lot of people have been getting double okay. downs for Diablo Four access for this next weekend. Double downs. Instead of uh, instead of buying the like full game or whatever and getting pre order <sighs> access that way. So. Yeah, yeah, Diablo Four. Anyways, well, uh, okay. Someone like call a double down as gross as you want, but like I've never had I one. Go to, when I go to KFC, like I eat the ingredients of a double down. <laughs> like I just I don't eat it all at once, but I eat the ingredients of a double. I eat like two pieces of chicken and like whatever's in the middle. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So what is it? Two chicken fillets with cheese in the center. Is that what a double down is? And they're yeah, bacon involved like too. Is it not bacon? Yeah, yeah. It was bacon. Ch- chicken bread, two pieces of chicken is bread, ch- uh, bacon, cheese, some sauce, I think, in the middle. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, and bacon. Yeah, cheese and bacon. By the time you're like getting close to done with it, isn't it, doesn't it just become a mess? It sounds like it. Yeah. Like, I mean, this, the, the like the crispy part comes off the chicken and like it doesn't stay together and like I, I don't. Oh, it's, how you it's eat it. definitely, they know it's a joke. They like KFC is not not blind to the fact that like this thing is greasy, messy, and just an affront <laughs> to every like culinary person, like any you know anybody who likes food. Like this is just like an offense to them, okay. and they're like, "Yep." Like, how do you eat it? You probably don't like you put like, it in your mouth and you chew. Yeah, <laughs> that's you, how like, you eat it. You set it in something bowl shaped. And then you like just grab handfuls of it with your and shove it in your mouth. Like that's how you eat a double down. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes that's sense. Fair. Well, I've never had one, so I haven't I, either. I we'll have to yeah. have to try them sometime. Yeah. The advertising works because we're still talking about it in great that's detail. That's true. Still, and I gar- <laughs> I guarantee you, at least one person watching is like, me, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get that right now. <laughs> yeah. I am. Yeah. So, uh, that was there. Uh, I'm trying to think what what are some of the other notable things that uh that happened uh we could read through the award winners if you want i i would be surprised if you guys recognized any of the names uh <laughs> especially i think co might recognize some of them zeke probably I, not I, yeah let, let, let's hear him let's hear him okay let me uh i don't even know if they let's see if they I'll, I'll let you know if i don't recognize one of any of them let's see if they've updated the website with the winners uh winners mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, great. Here we go. I've got all the winners. Uh, let me pull them up. I'll show them on stream. They did indeed update their site. Here's the website. Uh, they did sell tickets, so they had a live audience. That helped the show a lot. Uh, on the, the ground floor was all the streamers, and then up in the mezzanine was the the crowd, and that added to the jokes and everything. They had some... Uh, the, the opening had your usual affair of roast. That was really interesting. Uh, <laughs> all of the different. So? I mean, they straight up. I don't even know. Like how, some people probably won't even understand, or this is the first time they're hearing any of this. They talked about uh, Kai Sinat's uh, extracurricular activities on his recent uh, subathon as a joke. Uh, mm-hmm. They talked about. Um, Wait, there was there was numerous. Okay, never mind. Yeah, don't get into it. Uh, Let's not get into it. <laughs> yeah, that's some pretty brutal ones. Uh, there was a bunch of digs at Twitch about taking fifty percent of the revenue uh, from streamers. That was a pretty funny one, as, especially as the sponsor, when, <laughs> especially as Twitch was a sponsor for the show. Uh, <laughs> Ballsy. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, they they rolled a full on Fansly ad with profiles of Fansly creators uh, with Twitch sponsoring the show as well. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, Cutie had a, a a joke or a shot at uh, deep fakes uh, in the show, uh, given all of that re- recent uh, controversy. So nice. nice. Yeah, it, the the opening was was 
was pr pretty spicy, to be honest. I was kind of surprised uh, that the things were in there were in there. These are the winners. Uh, there's 28 categories. We can go through them all if you want. Uh, that's up to you. Best MMORPG streamer, Asmongold. Uh, now, maybe before we get in these, do they have how these are voted on? Because uh, it is fan voted, but I think there is also a panel. So I'm sure that so, question will come up in chat. Questions about voting right there. Uh, you find most of the not for streamers that are best for blah, blah, blah. Someone's saying 70% fan, 30% panel. Okay, there we go. That's I what I'm looking for. I don't know how for. true that is. That's oh, yeah, there's for. a couple people confirming that. Yep, 70-30. 70, 70 fan, 30 panel, which is which is cool. Like, they give the fan the most vote, but also, like, it's going to be completely unsurprising. Like, it's not going to be a, you know, the winners probably aren't going to be that surprising to you. You're going to be like, oh, that's the one I've heard of. Boop. Yeah. There was a whole category for Souls-like. Yeah. Uh, so we had Best MMO, Asmongold won that. Best Souls-like streamer, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Mika. I think it's Miss Mika. Uh, she is the oh. Souls streamer who defeated oh, Elden Ring on yeah. the DDR pad. And then yeah. also defeated Elden Ring on a DDR pad and also a normal thing at the same time or so, like just insane feats. Yeah. Uh, just crazy things to, to do in Elden Ring. Yeah, it's insane feats with feats. Yeah, I gotta oh. say, it's pretty cool to see Lobos on there. Yeah. It, like, that's, that's like, on, on this entire list, like, there's only, like, two or three people that I that I actually know personally, like, have, and have met. Right. Yeah. So, kind of like, yeah. sad we didn't see, we didn't see Peeve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There, like there's a lot a of no -brainer. Uh our, our communities are definitely on the outside of all of this, I would say. Yeah. Uh, our our show, social spheres and, and communities, for sure. Uh, best art streamer and potentially the best streamer name Meat Canyon. Absolutely love that. I'm a fan of him just from the name alone. Oh, um, Dia was there. He is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, strategy game. Not, not to be confused with. It's not Meat Cannon. No, <laughs> that's a totally different thing. No. Yeah. yeah. That's what they that's fired my, Double Down out of. That's true. That's also yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, Box Box was best strategy game streamer. Best chess streamer was Gotham Chess. Uh, best League of Legends streamer, Tyler won. Best Battle Royale <laughs> streamer was It's Timmy. Uh, best music streamer was T-Pain. Thought that was kind of funny. Because <laughs> like, okay. yeah, sure, that, that checks out. Uh, FPS streamer was Asu. Uh, Speedrun streamer was Point Crow. Uh, Hidden Gem was <clears throat> King, uh, King Games a lot. Or King's Game a lot. Probably mm -hmm. messing that name up. IRL streamer, Jake and Bake Live. Or is the... Uh, is the presenter stated Jake and Bacon? That's what they call the Sam a lot. <laughs> King Sam a lot. Okay, oh, thank you. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> good for him, man. Yeah, yeah. Jake he's, and a, Bacon he's an OG. Him. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, best role play streamer was uh, Phantom. Valorant streamer was Kaide. Kaide's acceptance speech was probably the best. Uh, the setup to the acceptance speech was that. A week or two ago, Kaide announced that she has, uh, unfortunately, uh, leukemia. And in her uh, acceptance speech, she said that she was surprised, but that she had spoken with uh, Cutie Cinderella before the event, and this was her make-a-wish. And I thought that was a pretty, pretty I, good dark humor. <laughs> dude, yeah, I, I think, I think I, she I won. And she, walked, she, she won and she walked up on yeah. stage and she says, I wasn't planning on winning. Yeah. Like, I didn't prepare a speech or anything. But you know, I, I, yeah, I was talking to Cutie instead of it, it would be my make a wish. So that was, yeah. that was, yeah, good. She's, I, she's I, got an incredibly grounded outlook on her situation. I have to admit, I think she at one point said that like internet trolls had t trained her for this moment. So like, she plays Valorant dealing uh, with all of this nonstop. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so the worst of the worst. Yeah, she's got a, sure. a very grounded outlook for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, hashtag fuck cancer. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Best Minecraft streamer was Quackity. Rising Star Award was Frogran. Uh, Frogan, sorry. Uh, stream Game of the Year was Elden Ring. No surprise there. Uh, content organization was Offline TV. Philanthropic Stream Event was the 500 Mile Cyclethon uh, from Sea Dog VA. Best VTuber was Iron Mouse. Streamed Event was the Mogul Chess Boxing Championship. Best Just Chatting Streamer was uh, Hassan Abi. Best variety streamer was XQC. League of Their Own was Doug Doug. Uh, the Streamer Streamer Award, which is an award where all of the streamers in attendance voted last night for their favorite streamer. Uh, that was Pay Money Wubby. 
Legacy Award went to Jerma, uh, 985. Uh, Gamer of the Year was Tins, and Streamer of the Year was Kai Sanat. What was, what's the Legacy Award? Legacy Award is uh, a legend who has contributed a great deal to uh, and has had a profound impact on the streaming industry, i.e. a career achievement award. Uh, Pokimane, I think, oh. got it last year, and Jerma got it this year. Um, cool. Jerma, in a lot of ways, is like shaped the event um, thing uh, that streamers have been putting on. He did like the Dollhouse, I think, was kind of the mm -hmm. first big one of those, and that really started a, a massive trend for things like the uh, the Streamer Awards and all of uh, Ludwig's events, the chess boxing stuff. Um, it's it's he's kind of the the beginning of that, I think, in a lot yeah. of ways. Um, it was totally also deserved. weird. That's cool. Yeah, it, it was a little weird because the way that I, I think legacy and and a lot of people in chat were like, did he die? <laughs> well, like, yeah, legacy. No, that's why I asked. There. Legacy generally indicates like really old. Yeah, like, and 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 you know, like I mean, in our industry, twelve is old, right? Like we've been doing this. Both all three of us have, are around that, so. That's yeah. that's kind of the inception. This all started around well, 2010. It's, it's like every other award show giving the lifetime achievement award to someone who's not dead. Yeah, you know? it's like yeah. Here's your lifetime achievement award. It's like I guess I'm done now. I guess I'll go die. I suppose like <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah. So it it was uh, yeah that that happened. Um, it was also cool. They kept the camera mo camera on him the entire time when they had like a little um video sizzle reel of kind of everything he's done and uh he was definitely getting emotional while watching it so oh it meant something to him and that was kind of cool to see uh that he wasn't just like goofing around and joking around the entire time um but yeah that 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 was the streamer awards it was uh i think it was about a cool. four to five hour event streamed they streamed the entire red carpet and they streamed the entire show uh it was open bar the entire time for the streamers and towards the end you could tell there was an open bar for about five or six hours. <laughs> it's like it was <laughs> there was some uh, there was some shouting uh, when people would would go to the stage or say things on stage, et cetera. Yeah, it was it was a lot of alcohol essentially. So, well, I, I mean, if it's a streamer award, you kind of I kind of want that, you know. I kind of want yeah. like oh, I think people so get up and get fucking trolled while they're up there just shout like yeah. I, I I appreciate the idea that it's not like a hundred percent reverent. Like that you yeah. got Oh god, yes. It, it's it doesn't not need like, to be like an Oscars kind of thing. No, okay. not at all. You need to have fun. Uh this industry does not really take itself too professionally in most cases. It would be awkward if if that's how it was yeah. on stage. Yeah, absolutely. Um someone a designated person like, why aren't you playing Valorant? <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, the live crowd was nice. I don't think there was any of that heckling, uh, so that was cool to see. But it would, it would be interesting. I, I think uh, I don't know who said it, but when XQC accepted his Variety Streamer uh, award, he said his like acceptance speech or whatever. And then as he was walking off, someone just screamed like he hasn't or he's on Adderall or he, he's something about Adderall. And I was like, okay, all right, sure, that's. <laughs> That's what I expected. So yeah, there, there was. Uh, it's also weird, by the way, if you're wondering how VTubers were there in person. They were on the VTuber stick, which is a moving thing that has an iPad at the top of it, and they were all live in the call, just like hanging out at the event. Gunrun was there, uh, who's the the head of V Sho V Shojo, I think is how v you pronounce Shoujo. it. Shojo. Yeah, uh, and they had a bunch of VTubers who were just like on iPads which sure why not it was it was kind of cool to see it was also a little weird yeah the old telepresence things that's exactly right they're getting used in the vtuber world so that's that it was it was a fun event uh all in all what else is Very going nice. on that we can uh, discuss skill up is up and moving for those uh curious so we'll have him here ah. in uh in just a bit I'm trying to think what else we can Zeke, you got what? What do you What have you been playing, Zeke? What have you been doing? What you, what's been going on with you? Well, we talked with Co about last <laughs> last epoch. What have you been playing? Yeah. Uh. Well, I I played uh um uh this last week. I I, I played the next game in the the saga of Metal Gear Solid. I played Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, and uh, I 
got to give a shout out to um, Ty Martinez and uh, Bribe Gun Tales for joining me uh, on this on the the first Metal Gear that you can actually co op. Um, oh, it was yeah. a hell of an experience, but definitely like my least favorite like Metal Gear game by a huge margin. Like it really had yeah, dude. Like I mean, much props to. Uh, my co-op peoples for for taking me through it and showing me some of the fun stuff but like i'll be honest man it the like metal gear solid 4 and then it has a huge drop in like charm and like weirdness and easter eggs and like all that shit now granted this peace walker was made for psp this was like it came out on a mobile device so there was definitely some limitations there yeah but I don't think that limitations of the system, like it doesn't per like it, it wouldn't affect the story, right? It wouldn't affect like the shit, you know, the 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 weird shit that it, that these games are known for, and it just didn't have any of that. It had gameplay, and the gameplay was, albeit was fun, but like. That that's what I went into Metal Gear in the first place, thinking like, oh, this is gonna be like sort of weird, you know, but it's gonna be like awesome tactical espionage, like Splinter Cell. Yeah. What I got was completely wrong, or what I my idea was completely wrong, but I was so pleasantly surprised. And every game consecutively, I was like, yes, fucking sh give me that weird shit. Give me that ununderstandable, convoluted storyline. Give me those characters that you have that have like five different names and they just throw them out randomly. You got to remember, oh, this guy's this and this guy. Okay, the nickname there, backstory here, twist there. And then this game was just like straightforward story, gameplay. And let's add some fucking base management in there for some reason. I'm like, no, <laughs> this is not what I mean. If I would have played this and never have played the other ones. I might have had like way more fun because this the story mostly made sense which i was i was upset about um <laughs> there was a management element where you like you like you see me balloon like ballooning soldiers out like you balloon them out and you add them to your base and then you put them in places like research medicine uh uh mess hall combat and like they have their little categories and you put them in there and they have like little ratings on each one like thing that they do so you try and place them as best you can and like uh the better you place them the more it unlocks like research uh things like equipment and and weapons and and that kind of shit huh um that, okay but that's very yeah the NGS management 5. thing just seems so out of fucking place man it, and apparently five like they they kept that going yes like yeah. they're like that management shit is a good idea Let's keep it going and i'm and i'm just like now i don't even i don't even know if i want to play five now <laughs> not yeah. only is, it, is there management in it but it's it's uber long right it's like this longer game is long? by far no no uh oh uh, five five is 50 hours for first People ending saying, or something yeah like 70 hours or something like that yeah yeah that's I, what i was the consensus i was getting it's pretty long gameplay though is the but, best in five hundred hundred percent I don't care though. That's the thing. I don't <laughs> That's not why you're playing Metal Gear. No. Yeah. It turns out like after the first one, I'm like, oh, I gotta change my fucking mindset about this Metal Gear shit. And once I did that, I was like, oh fuck. I was just like, let's get through the gameplay shit so we can get back to the fucking weirdness. Um, well, actually, no, no, no. It was more like, get out of my way, soldier that I've got to defeat. There's a I gotta I gotta knock on this poster to get a fucking Easter egg, you know, like that's the shit that I love. So what what was if it all was all the weird go ahead. Well, what if it was this gameplay with all of the weirdness? That would be Cuz that's 5. Yeah. If that's what 5 is, yeah. Then maybe like maybe I'll change my tune, but the management shit just I did it didn't jive with me. It seemed out of place. And not only that, but I'll be completely honest with you. For my like in my opinion, I like I could have just breezed through it and I didn't know that like I didn't need to unlock most of the shit that the management shit unlocked. I ended up using like maybe five weapons throughout the entire game and I could have mm. just stuck with those like 
you know, I like, and I was doing non like uh, trying to do non lethal as much as possible. Um, and yeah, you just just need like the two non lethal weapons, the the pistol and the and the the rifle, the Mosin, and a rocket launch, a good rocket launcher, a good machine gun for the parts that are you have to do like lethal damage, and like you know some rations. Like, and that's like fucking. It's like basically all I use for the entire game. Um. And it just seemed like it seemed so out of place, man. It just it didn't jive with me. Huh. Um, and also like it, you, it, the PSP ness of it, the PSP ness <laughs> of it really really shines through in like the mission length. Like the missions are repetitive and short. They're super short, which is nice. But they like you go to, back to the same fucking place like twenty times. Like but, you got yeah. another mission. You gotta go right there. And like oh I know this map. And you just like you know walk through it and. You're done. And there's no like cool like brother. There's no like moments like that until like the, maybe the last hour of the game. Then I was like, this is what I wanted the whole game, man. You get some, you know, you get like a a, a, a teenage girl. The, okay, forgive me. This is factual. This is not me. Like you get a teenage girl in her underwear in a fucking Metal Gear. That's your final boss. Like. Sorry for spoiling the, the fucking however long old game. Oh, but really? That is the final boss of the game. Is a supposedly, we don't know. Maybe she's not 16, but they say she's 16, but she's also fucking a double agent, triple agent, whatever. So we don't really know who she is or what she's all about, anyway. Wait, so, does, do, does her name start with a P, Zeke? Yes, it's pause. Interesting. Having not yeah. played this, but playing five, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So so for some reason, well, the reason why she's in her underwear, uh they told they, 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 they you find out later is because the cockpit of the Metal Gear Zeke fills with fluid, water or something like that. But I don't know why. <laughs> Reasons. <laughs> okay. But I think it's just an excuse to get her in her underwear. Anyway, um so that's okay. that's the final boss. And I was like, this is what Metal Gear is to me. This is what I want. I want a weird fucking gunslinger guy who loses his arm but gets another arm and the arm has a personality that takes over his own personality. That's the shit that I want for Metal Gear. And yeah. this game had very little of it except at the very beginning and the very end. The rest of it was fucking like the gameplay was fine. It was fun but it was like there's there's tedium to it and I just felt like the last fucking stream I did of it I was just like Let's just get to the end. <laughs> just Let's gotta get, get to the end. end. Okay. And then when it started, the end started to unfold story wise. I was like, now I'm going to savor it and enjoy it because now I don't understand what you're talking about. And that's, that's, that's a comfortable zone for metal gear for me. Yeah. Makes sense. You should play five then. Cause I didn't realize that this game has like story elements that lead into five. It's kind of good that you played this, uh, because I'm trying to play them in release order. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think the next Smart. one, I'm not sure if it's Rising, Revengeance, and then Five, or I'm not sure the order. I think, I think Five order. was the most recent, right? Yeah, yeah. It's probably Revengeance then, I would think, is, is where you're headed next. Because this was, this was PSP, right? So then that would have been PS4 for Revengeance? And it's, People are saying Ground Zeroes, but Ground Zeroes is kind of like a throwaway, isn't it? Isn't it's it like, like no, just a real... it, it's important to play four or five. Okay. It, it's also very short for story purposes. Like, yeah. Super short. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be fine, but okay. So you're playing this on the PS3 and they, they still have servers running for this. That's a funny thing that they like, apparently the PlayStation three has like one lonely workhorse server <laughs> or something <laughs> like that, that, they keep up just in case, I guess. I don't know. Huh. Um, but yeah, we co-op through that server. And you think it like, it seems like they only have one because as soon as like someone on my team noticed like, oh, someone else jumped on the fucking online <laughs> Peace Walker server. And it started like crashing. <laughs> it was, like too much for the, the server to handle. 
and it started like you know we were on the final boss and it went like the connection lost like three times oh god and it had not done that throughout the entire thing like we had minor interruptions for other people but never me like i never got disconnected except for the final boss when we were trying to do like some cool shit and it just kept like you know dropping us i was like fucking what the hell yeah we went all this way and then it started really messing up on the final fucking boss great yeah well that's that's metal gear solid yeah. i guess ultimately or that's Peace but i will Walker, say I like ultimately we got to see the the ultimate co-op weapon slingshot we got to do that because we had four people in co-op which like i'm sure not a lot of people had got a chance to do because you have to get three other people who are willing to play this piece of shit with you so <laughs> we got four people all together and what it is is one person has to have the weapon okay so thankfully one of us what had gone far enough in the game to actually or done all the shit in the game to get the weapon uh bribe i believe had that bribe gun tails um and he, what you do is if in co-op you can share things if you're close enough you can open your inventory and then you know use a d-pad to scroll through their inventory as well so two people grab a pole two people one person grabs the the basket Center. yeah and then and then i usually like i would get and you would you would position yourself in such a fashion that there was two poles the basket was behind it and the person would i would stand in front and then i'd press the button and i'm not shitting you they would launch me into the enemy It'll do damage tons of damage like <laughs> an, like way more damage than any other weapon yeah okay so okay. that was really cool yeah and thank you uh to uh scribbles for joining us for the four person co-op when we needed somebody cool yeah. so overall though a blah experience not a fan of of peace walker it didn't feel like it man it did not feel like a metal gear game to me it felt i mean it felt like a, a like maybe an above average like uh as like a, a spy management game okay but like the charm came at the beginning and at the end and the codec calls they kind of leave it to you to go through them they have like just a bank like like a, a, a just a codec log of each character and you can just go through them and it sucks because a lot of the time if you played any of the metal gear games a lot of the time kojima just throws shit in that he likes just yes. facts about things like facts about movies and animals and like you know music and like he just throws in shit that he likes and albeit that it can be charming and funny when you're not forced to listen to it you kind of skip over it and there's a lot of that shit in this game and i didn't know like which which codex i wanted to listen to because if i did sit down and listen to all of them it was like i think four hours of like just codec calls that's a lot and i would listen that's to them back to back, back like in the other games they're like you know peppered in as you go like yeah. they'll stop you and be like brr, brr. You're like okay talk talk to me for a little bit yeah and that's fine but like giving you a whole database of these it's just it's daunting it's too much you gotta like sit down and buckle up and i just didn't have the patience for it well you're gonna play Since, five eventually right uh maybe i mean yes probably okay i have to all right but it's not it's gonna be mm, gonna be a little bit down the road yeah yeah well it's it's a pretty long game too if you want to see all but the, I think, the endings yeah but i think i got i got i got like you got a couple games two, before if that. not three games between that right release Probably. order wise yeah they they yeah, gotta do revengeance rising and and zero whatever the fuck yeah revengeance is a fan favorite and also does pretty well on twitch uh for what it's worth like people watch uh playthroughs of that whereas i think People didn't even know Peace Walker was a game. Uh, <laughs> so it probably leads to why people are, yeah, less interested. In I'll be honest. Product. I'll be honest with you. Like if I could, like I was telling Co this, if I could have gone, if I could go back in time and talk to myself, I've been like, just look up the YouTube videos for Peace Walker, dude. Yeah. It'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. The co-op stuff was fun, but not worth four streams. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, I think everyone's looking forward to the Revengeance playthrough as well as Five. We'll we'll check in with mm -hmm. that. Uh, Skill up is is here. Uh, he's on the call. We're gonna take a quick break uh, and we'll bring him on. For anyone that's uh, not observing daylight saving times, aka the rest of the world outside of the U.S., uh, we're on time. This show's just gonna start and it's gonna be fine. Uh, for everyone else, 
you're an hour late. What are you doing? What you should have been here. We start. We've been doing the show for an hour. But anyways, uh, <laughs> let's cut it to a quick break. We'll get everything set up with uh, with skill up, and then we'll uh, we'll jump back and spend the next uh, next two hours with them. We'll see you guys then. Be right back. All right, welcome back. We've got our Australian friend on time because daylight saving mm. time does not affect him. Uh, but it's also what? Is it 5 a.m.? Is that what we deduced for you? Uh, it's 5 a.m. now, yeah. I remember the reasons because we've talked about doing this for so long. We have. And like li literally years, I think we've been talking about. Because, and I've always been like, sorry, guys, it's just it's too early, man. It's too early. And the one time... I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Man. I was very I surprised care. by your response. 5 a.m. It's fine. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, that's the weekend when Daylight Savings kicks. And that's what that's what happened. So, But no, thank you for having me. We we really have been talking about doing this forever. So, we have. Um, yeah. Super happy to finally be here. I think, uh, I think we started right when your first child was born do you do you have more than yeah, it yeah. was two, two and a half years, years ago. Of, yeah two and a half years ago jesus christ Time yeah that's when here. we started communicating trying to get you on the show uh and co mm. uh, last week was like we should get uh skill up on the show and i was like <laughs> i don't know if that's gonna work man he it's like 5 a.m as you know it's I, I'm like, yeah, we should get we should get skill up because we were talking about I think a review you did or something. And JP's like, no, man, we've tried like 20 times. I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> and that was it. And yeah, then yeah. the next thing JP says in chat the next day is, uh, skill up's on next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this isn't even my first like super early start this <clears throat> week because I had to get up at like 2:30 a.m. on Saturday to do the day one raid for Destiny. Yeah. So like this is just this is just part of the routine now, man. Getting up at inordinate hours to do stupid video game shit that's just that's how it goes now so it's yeah. life yes is, is your schedule Ooh, just man. forever ruined now or will you be able to adjust <sighs> quickly I, I i think i'll be fine i think okay. i just I sleep sleep in me where we get along pretty fine so you that's know good. I'm, 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 i always look at those people who say i can't sleep and i'm like man that would suck that would really suck like when my, <laughs> hit, my head hits the pillow i'm like i'm just out i'm done i'm like off i go so yeah man very I'm, easy I'm sleeper cool uh, yeah. well, hey, let's. Yeah, dude, that just it sucks to be you. Let me... <laughs> <laughs> this exactly. is great, by the way. Mm. Totally. totally. <laughs> let's uh, let's have you introduce yourself for folks that uh, that are not within the the skill up universe. Uh, who are you? What do, what do you do on the internet? Uh, and where and where can people like check out your stuff if they have never heard of you to begin with? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so my name's Ralph. I am a YouTuber and I do video game reviews. Basically, I think that's like my main offering. I do a cheesy news show as well, um, once a week, just sort of have like you know wrapping up what's been going on. Um, I have a podcast called Friends Per Second with um, some people that I really love: the Completionist, uh, Jake Baldino and uh lucy james from GameSpot and giant bomb and um yeah I'm, i have my own i have my own youtube channel i used to stream i used to stream back in the day but i just uh, i ran out of energy man you guys who stream it's i don't know how you do it i really don't it's just the amount of throughput that is required to keep a stream going days and days and out oh man i can't I, I, think I like to do a 45 hour dude, stream and I'm like, I'm I think there's right a now. split <laughs> between YouTubers I, and streamers. And it's exactly that. And Ko's going to express that. I think right no, now, no, no, I was going to say, <laughs> I, I look at one of the final like screenshots of what your the editors editing. look oh, like God. at the end <laughs> yeah, of your videos. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I get stressed for you. I feel yeah, well, like, that, Oh yeah, that's why I hire an editor. So I don't have to do oh, that so either. You know? uh, <laughs> so, that's so, um, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> But um, That's awesome. but no, I did, uh, I did, I did stream back in the day. It's fun. I really like it. I, I do miss that audience connection. But um, I guess I had to make a decision a little while ago because I'm like, well, what have I got time for in my life? And I knew that I really loved YouTube and I didn't want to give that up. And streaming was something that was, oh, like some, something that I did, but I never really like took to it. You know, I think there's a certain type of personality that draws a lot of energy from the streaming process, and I very quickly identified. That I am not one of those people. You know what I mean? It takes more out of me than it gives, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. at that point, I was like, okay, cool. I'm a YouTuber. That is it. That is what I'll be spending my time on. So 
Yeah. Yeah. I've always That's, um... likened it to uh, the difference between uh, people who enjoy more acting in movies or acting on the stage. You know, like some sure, people love, sure. like me personally, I love feeding off the energy of a live audience, man. There's nothing, nothing quite like it for me. Like I've done like commercials and like, you know, student films and shit like that. And then it has its place and it's fun. But like, it's so weird to, you know, to not have like that instant, like, did that go well? Like with the audience? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I also I also realized that I just became very sort of like self-conscious almost about what I say. And that's why I script all of my scripts. Like everything that I put up on my YouTube channel is scripted. I used to do sort of ad lib videos, but then I would say stuff and I'm like, well, I didn't really mean that. And then people would be like, why did you say that? I'm like, well, that's actually not what I meant. So I, as I said, I became more careful with what I say. And that's why the scripting process, excuse me, is like a really warm blanket that I can kind of wrap myself up in. And again, it's totally live when you're, when you're, you know, doing whatever. So one of the things that I'm with the podcast that I've started doing is kind of like just putting myself out there more in that kind of unscripted space to develop that skill set and that comfort. Because again, that doesn't really kind of naturally flow for me. So yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I think in the world of YouTube, you only get a chance to say what you want to say once. And there's no, yeah. you can't respond to the immediate feedback of what you said. So you have to be very careful with what you're saying. Whereas For we sure. could say random shit on a stream <laughs> and then five seconds later explain exactly why we said sure. that. Right. So sure. I get what you're saying. <laughs> scripts are important. Like, thank, yeah. thank God sometimes there's somebody sitting on the other edge of the table for those unscripted moments. Uh, L Linus. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, <laughs> that's true. I saw that clip. That was the greatest clip I've ever seen in my life. Oh, God, oh that's my right. God. Yeah. Oh, the best part. I, I saw the first part about that clip. Uh, I forgot about and it, that. And the clip stopped right before his friend clarified the statement. So there was oh this, this 30, there's this 30 second period where I was like, I had no idea he was a closet racist. <laughs> <laughs> I think, have yeah. you guys talked about this earlier in the show just in case anyone in the no no, 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 no it's, it's, it all. if you want to explain sure it, it by all means yeah if you want to explain it please do because i'm sure a lot of people have known i'm, I'm almost terrified to explain it but it's basically true. go and look on twitter you will look up linus take tips and he's doing this bit where he's talking about like how our times have changed and the language we've changed used like oh you know the hard r for example like you know it used to be so much more common in 2003 i saw a family guy episode recently that had the hard r in it then Linus says, I used to drop the odd <laughs> hard R back in the day. And his co-host is like, uh, huh, staring okay. at him. Just right. Like, hmm. And then, and then like, it goes on for a bit. And then his co-host is like, just to clarify, man, like, you, you, like you're talking about the N word, right? And he's like, Linus is like, what? No, absolutely not. I'm talking about the other thing. And then obviously it clarifies. Talking about the hard but R. Yeah, that's then, obviously yeah. that's how the kids use it, right? That's the hard R. No, Linus, that is not the hard R. Okay, dude, that is a different thing. So, yeah, and for um, those and for those yeah. that have not picked up on it yet, hard R is the mental disability, <laughs> the R word. You yes. know, oh, yo, you're yeah. such an R word. Like that's what yeah, he yes. thought. So he was. Just, oh man, the look. Yeah. Luckily, Linus face, still has uh, a career. That's nice. It's nice yeah, that he's still yeah. this, you know, so. yeah, 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 exactly. That mm. uh, man. Yeah. That that for those uh, of you who, who, who don't know what a hard R is, uh, there's a Tupac album that starts with "Strictly for My," and that's not a hard R. Well, the other version yeah. is the hard R. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We, we don't need to clarify. We don't need anymore. to clarify any of that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not even. Yes, we, we okay. are sh uh, shelving that conversation and moving forward. Yes, uh, very quickly here. Uh, so, what what started the whole? You, I want to be a content creator. Skill up, like, did you? Was that always a thing? Did you walk into it nah. with that in mind, or did it just well, kind of happen? Or what was the process? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the long, long, long story is that I've been playing video games since I was four years old, uh, and uh, you know, I really wanted to have a career in that when I was younger. But then I was like, well, no, video games are not a real job. They're not a real career. I have to grow up and do a big boy job and work in the corporate space and whatever. And I was like, that's what I should do. And so I did that and uh, did not like that at all. I really hate the corporate life. No disrespect to anybody that does, but it's definitely not for me. Oh, you are a uh, YouTuber. You just said no disrespect to anybody. <laughs> You're covering what, all what, your what? tracks. I love it. Yeah, I sure, love it. sure, 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 sure. <laughs> um, so, so, uh, then I was like, oh, I want to get a job in video games. And the problem was that I only had like this corporate background, uh, and I live in Australia, right? So 
there's there's very there are very few video game developers here or at least there were you know quite a few years ago and um all the publishing offices for example they really want people with skills in like marketing or pr and whatever skills that i didn't have so i applied to a whole bunch of jobs and no one would hire me and i was like okay i can't get a job in the video games industry so what should i do and i was like i'm gonna start a website that kind of focuses on curating like guides essentially you know like youtube guides like i would say here are the best five youtube guides on this specific topic okay and so rather than relying on the youtube algorithm you would do that not a great idea at all what time Website was this didn't go. what year was this oh this was like six years ago i think oh six okay okay yeah 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 and um and then I was like, well, if I'm going to do this thing, I should probably start my own YouTube channel as well to promote the website. And the website never even like went live. The YouTube channel kind of did. And I started just making division videos because I was like, oh, well, this is an example of the kind of guides that we would have on the website. And then the division videos just took off. Like that was it. That was just, it just, they just went. And um, yeah, I mean, I it just, I don't even know how that happened exactly. I think I, I did some video about um, the DPS calculation in the division, like how to, how to, how the DPS is calculated. And that, that sort of went viral within the division community. And then I kind of just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And yeah, I just it went from there. So um, I was, after that, I was a YouTuber, you know, and, and uh, it was pretty clear to me straight away. It was pretty clear to me um, quite quickly that this is a career that I could be doing because I hit, about 100,000 subscribers within the first nine months. Wow. And I was like, okay, this is a thing. Well, because I was writing The Division, right? The Division was very big at the time. Division and I one, was one right? of the Division one, yeah. yeah. And I was like one of the main Division YouTubers. So you get a lot of momentum from those sorts of games when they blow up. And um, I was like, okay, this is a career that I want to have. And then I worked for two and a half years uh, part-time and working and you know, YouTube at the same time. And then I made the cut over and uh, went full time after about, yeah, two and a half, three years. And um, in that time as well, I'd moved away from the division. I become kind of like a general looter shooter guides creator. And then after a while, I, after a while, I made a video uh, reviewing Nier Automata. And um, that was the review that kind of really made that, that really sort of worked, you know, and it sort of like really clicked with the, with the audience. And I was like, maybe I'm a games reviewer, maybe. And so I kept doing games reviews. And um, yeah, like, you know, roughly, I think it's been about four years now that I think I've been focused on reviews almost exclusively. Yeah. And um, that was it. That's sort of my abridged story. It, yeah. It's a, it is a strange story because you were successful at almost every path. And that is not the usual, I think, for a content creator. What what do you think like is the reasoning for that if you if you had to say one? Um oh, well I wouldn't say I was successful in every path because I definitely yeah. spent a lot of time in the wilderness. Like for example, when the division was kind of dropping off, I was like, well, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? And so yeah, it definitely was a period where I was like, oh, is this still going to be a thing? I'm really not sure. And then the whole looter shooter thing I would say I found like moderate success. So if you know what I mean, like it wasn't really popping off, but again, it was like, well, I like these type of games and I'll just make some guides around them and, and we'll see what, what clicks. Um, but I think, yeah, the review thing just really worked because I think it allowed me to talk about the games that I was passionate about. And that was one thing that I looked at when I was covering the division of these looter games. I'm like having to play the same game over and over again forever to make content on it. That's a really bad recipe for long-term happiness, I think. <laughs> and like, I know it works for some people, don't get me wrong. But for me personally, you just, you, you, when you have to play games like that in that way, you just, you stop enjoying that game. And I definitely speak to other content creators who are doing that. And they, it ebbs and flows for them. Sometimes they're like, I fucking hate the game that I'm covering. <laughs> you know, and I hate it. I never want to log in. And other times when it's really popping off and there's new stuff there and they're excited, like, you know, they, 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 re, they reconnect with that love of that game that, that their sort of livelihood is based on. But I decided that, yeah, I, just, I didn't want to have that kind of formula in my life. And so the review thing really works for me because I get to just play all new stuff all the time and talk about it. Um, but, but yeah, I would say just, that willingness to sort of think longer term about what is going to work for me personally is probably one of the reasons why I'm still on the platform. 
you know, that looking back at the division and making the hard choice to move away from that, that was a good call. Similarly with the looter stuff and looter shooter stuff, I was like, well, this isn't making me happy. I need to move away from this. That was a good call, you know? And I think it's hard to make those audience transitions on YouTube, you know, it's because- Extremely hard, sort of, yeah. Yeah, you, your audience is expecting X from you and the algorithm expects X from you. And so I knew that when I made those jumps, I'd have to push through that stuff to sort of find a new equilibrium, build a new audience or whatever. And, you know, luckily it worked. So, um, yeah, I would say that kind of like, do what you're passionate about. It sounds really lame, but it's actually like a thousand percent true in content creation. Like if you're not passionate about what you are making, you will almost certainly fail. Or you're like, you'll have some success for a while, but eventually you will fail. So I think just like actually liking what you do is so critical and having the courage to like pursue that even when it looks like it's a bad idea. I think that is really important. Yeah, that's it. I think a lot of creators will chase the algorithm or, or chase the yeah. numbers and play whatever's, you know, the latest and greatest. But to, to hear you say you, you kind of chased what made you feel good. Mm. is a little refreshing almost like that's not a thing that I think a lot of creators do <laughs> in our Reckon, industry. I, I, I don't know. I find most creators that I speak to, they're doing what they like. Most of them. Most, I definitely know some that aren't. But I, I, think, most of them I are. think there's a difference between doing what you like and finding success. So you like that. I think right? that's, I think it's the goal. I think that's, yeah, what this, yeah. I think, I think the goal is finding that thing that not only compensates you and brings you, you know, financial yes. wealth, but something that you absolutely love doing, the passion. Um, you know, so it's 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 not it's it's kind of the smartest play in any position. Like some people can find their passion, you know, and it's also kind of their job and they can kind of synergize those two, but other people just need it to be their passion. Um yeah. and especially like That's for true. streamers, man. I mean, it's the show's not as good if the streamer's not having fun. Like and, and unfortunately but unfortunately, it's the kind of situation where a lot of streamers are just like you're talking about. They're they're stuck in those like, well, I don't want to branch out because this is my key yeah. game, my main game, and I have to keep playing this or my numbers will go down. And it's just, you know, it's a it can be a miserable position yeah. uh, to be in, totally. unfortunately. Totally. Um, yeah, and I was, I was like, into a job job. Yeah. Sorry, Zeke. Yeah, which is why like I I gave my my viewers like super low expectations and they don't expect shit out of me like ever it's great <laughs> same, same you like, do did he show up today? Show. Yeah. that's good enough good job good job you got here good job he showed up yeah that's that's half the battle sometimes uh and he's only half drunk today it's great <laughs> <laughs> only half a bottle today not the full yeah. bottle. that's right yeah his, his rider is a little expensive sometimes we didn't give him a full bottle this week uh, for you, Skillup, are you chasing al uh, algorithms? Are you looking into numbers? Are you like paying attention to any of that? Or do you just Nothing. record the script, Nothing. put it out, move on? Yeah, look, I, I'm very lucky. Obviously, you get to a point where you hit, like, you would know, you'd all understand. Like you get to a point where you're like, cool, I just get to do my own thing now. You know what I mean? Uh, I think as a young, as a so up and coming creator, when you're on the grind and you're trying to like break through, you do need to be really smart. You do need to like, play what's hot. You do need to do the clickbait. You do need to do all the shit, right? Um, but after a while, I think that stuff becomes more of a hindrance to you. You know, like for example, I used to have like really clickbaity thumbnails, um, you know, with like big brash kind of declarative statements on there. Like no faces, but like, you know, <laughs> this game sucks or something, you know what I mean? Um, and and after a while, like people would watch my stuff and they'd be like, oh, I, I like his videos, but I can't handle his thumbnails. They're too annoying. And that would really, what? that would piss me off. Really? Like, well, no, but I understand that though, right? Because clickbait is an obnoxious thing. It's like a book cover and you see it in a bookstore. And even if the book is like the greatest book ever written, if it has some shitty, annoying cover on it, you're just like, fuck that book. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, I was like, so it got to me. And then I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of all the clickbait from my thumbnails. I'm literally going to put the conclusion to my video in the title. And that is what I'm going to run with. And that's been like one of the best things that I've ever done for my channel. Because again, it's like just very clean. It's just like, here is a photo of the game with the word review next to it. Here is my conclusion in the title. Even my, um, my news videos don't really have any clickbait. They're usually just the name of the games that I'm talking about in the show. Like, that's it most of the time. I mix it up every now and then. But, um, but yeah, so, so that, um, 
I forget what the question was. What was the question? How do we get on? This I don't know, but now you, I'm realizing oh, we, you yeah, you, we don't keep track. Yeah, we don't We're keep track. We're talking about doing what you love and changing that up. And like, it's wild you know. to me that like you have quite literally bucked every trend that a successful YouTuber in today's day and age says to do. Like, Mr. Beast oh, sorry, is we're out there. About yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Beast sure, is out there, sure, like, sure, sure. constantly talking about how, like, thumbnails, you know, 90% of the video. Yes. The video could be fantastic, but if you don't have a good thumbnail, then the video is dead. No, but, blah, but, blah, but, blah. But, but, but he's right. He's like, right, totally, but you're, he's, he's you're totally not correct. doing that. So what are you but doing? Same, that's different. <laughs> no, no, but at the same time, as well, I think, again, if Mr. Beast put out a pure black thumbnail on his next video with nothing on it, just a just black. That video would still yeah. get 100 million views, right? Because it's Mr. Beast. Yeah. And again, thing- you hit like a... Sorry, you go. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you hit a threshold where you're like, cool, I'm out there now. My brand is out there now. And that's just how it goes. And so at this point, I'm lucky enough where when a game drops, enough people are going to come to my channel to see the review of that game no matter what, like, as in, you know, regardless of if I put thumb, like, like clickbait in the title or not. So I'm like, well, why would I put clickbait? I don't need to do that anymore. But again, I would very much urge young, like uh, up and coming creators, please clickbait the shit out of your videos. Like do it, man. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? Discovered. Yeah. yeah. You need yeah. to be discovered. Like you need to grab that third rail and ride it. And because that is the, this, this, and, or, and you also need to be aware of what's hot and you need to and like talk about that stuff and play it. Right. You can't, Obviously, some people can enter the game and have the approach that I have now. And they're just like, they let the quality speak for itself and it does get found and off it goes. Of course, some people can do that. But I think most people who enter are going to have to do a bit of that hustle. You know what I mean? So that's why I never look down on anyone that has like clickbait thumbnails or any of that shit. Because I'm like, no, that is, that is how you start. It's and that's the industry. Grow, so. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's totally. and totally. It's interesting because uh, especially talking about Mr. Beast. I mean, Mr. Beast is a, is a younger guy especially compared to like sure. a lot of the people of his level. And it's kind of interesting because when, when he says stuff like he does about thumbnails, especially it's kind of a little glimpse into his current mindset. Like he's still very much in that go, 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 like get bigger, yeah. get bigger, get bigger mindset. And I would, and I mark my words, I would not be surprised in the slightest two, four, six years from now, he's toned it all back. And he's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is this is where I always wanted to be. <laughs> you know, like, like sure. it, it just kind of sure. it shows you where you 600 are. Six hundred million those, subscribers. Yeah, he's like, yeah, know, this right? is it, man. This is it. And that's literally, like, and what's right gonna be funny is like you said, all of his videos at that point are just black thumbnails. That's it. Yeah, giant black. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it's 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 you know, it's just where you are mentally a lot of times with that stuff. I and it's funny you said that. True. I uh started just testing the waters. Uh, did like a highlight secondary channel thing, and biggest complaint by far is just like. What is the what are these thumbnails, man? Yeah. Like I had yes. a I had a YouTube team managing the thumbnails. And they were doing just like yes. you were saying, oh, we just gotta get traction. Yeah. We gotta do I was just like, you guys do what you want, whatever. I would I wouldn't even pay attention to them. And I kept getting people coming to the what was with that last thumbnail? And I was like, oh yeah. God, what thumbnail? And I'd have to go like <laughs> look at it, like what, what happened? But and sure enough, they were just like you said, and yeah. That doesn't that mean yeah. they were working though? To a degree. Um, but at the same time, it's like I, I think uh, another good, uh, an interesting thing Skill Upset is with that book. It's like it gets to a point where the thumbnail can detract from the content. Yeah, and yeah. especially for established things, it's like, you know, that, that book could have been great, but you look at the, the, the cover and it's just like, uh, you, just, you just do that sigh where it's like, why did you do <laughs> yes. that? Like, you know, like, sure. why, why? Why you got to cheapen the whole sure. thing with that, you know? So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. And, and a lot of times totally. people don't want gimmick. They want quality content. Does- they want... Yes, the real stuff. Do you think that that purely depends on the age of the viewer? Not necessarily. I think it depends on the intention of the viewer. I think it depends. And, and you can be a younger For- person and still want quality content that's not clickbaity. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes you just want trash TV. Sometimes you want trash content. You, you go through Reddit or TikTok looking for the best clickbait you can find. But a lot of times yeah. it's not what you're looking for. Like when you're looking for a, a review that you actually want to put stock into. When you're looking for a good guide on a game that you actually want to learn from. You, know, you don't need clickbait in that. You need something good that's going to enrich your experience. So, yeah, very different intentions. Yeah, you agree with that, Skillop? Yeah, totally. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I think that there's this. I, I catered almost exclusively to my existing audience at this point because I have enough confidence that they are going to keep coming back and that they will push my videos out. Like they'll share it with their friends and whatever else. And also that the algorithm as a result of that will reward me, so to speak. 
because they'll see the engagement with my existing viewers, right? Right. But at the same time, if I'm focused on discovery, if I was more focused on discovering or building a new audience, then I would be pushing into more uncomfortable territory when it comes to clickbait or thumbnails or whatever else, um, you know, and then I would be less focused on my existing audience. You know what I mean? But I know my audience really values quality as Koa said. That's what matters to them. That is why I script. That is why I thumb and title my videos the way that I do. I kind of want to just bring that to them in that way. Um, and so, yeah, no, I really agree. Cool. That actually brings up a question I want to ask you if we could, I don't know if we could switch gears for a second, if anybody had anything to say about thumbnails. Um, <laughs> I just want to add, like, like I've thought about this, and I'm sure anybody who's a streamer has thought about, like, and Co does, you know, Co's uh, thoughts on games and stuff like that. And I've thought about, like, if I was going to review games, like, what would I do? I would have, I would have to edit it. I would have to, you know, because I'm a stuttering mess. Like, if you've ever watched this show, you know, like, when I get really, like, decided about something, I start just spitting and <laughs> drooling and fucking, you know, shit just flies out of my mouth. So I would have to be scripted and stuff. But I just want to know from someone who does this, like, well and regularly and for years, what are the core, like, ideals of a good review? Like, what do you, mm. like, is there any, like, things that you really need to latch on to when, like, this, for a good review to happen, a, yeah. B, and C have to happen. And real quick, to add on to this question, do you have, like, a format you follow for every review? Oh, uh, yeah. So, first of all, no, I don't have a format that I do for every review. Um, every time, it's just whatever sort of comes out. Um, in answer to your question, uh, first of all, I think I have to say, you have to, I, have, I wouldn't say, there is no set kind of, a review must be X, Y, and Z. I think mm -hmm. that um, I look at, for example, donkey reviews, right? Which I think are some of the best game reviews. Uh, and I know a lot of people totally disagree with that. And they're like, that's such a shit take. But I'm like, no, when donkey talks about a game, really clearly communicates in such a succinct amount of time, exactly what that game is to him. And he's able to provide examples for him. And I know a lot of people take exception to the examples that he uses and he feel like they're <laughs> cherry picked and whatever else, but he is telling a story about how the game has affected him and he builds his story based around that. Right. So again, and then you compare that to like, you know, a, a, like a, a, a more mechanical say IGN review where it's like, we're going to go through this and then we're going to go through that. And it just sort of thunders through the different components of the game. And it gives you a really broad overview of its different components, how it performs sound graphics and whatever. That is also a perfectly fine review. You know what I mean? Personally, what I look, f what I try and do every time, I think the most important thing that you can deliver your audience is like your own personal perspective, your own take on what that game is. And that's why I don't have any specific format for how a review should be, because sometimes a game is really going to speak to me at a very kind of like emotional level where I just feel it, you know, something like Sable, for example. And when you just feel a game, I don't know if you guys played Sable. Uh, familiar with One it, in the, didn't play it much. In so. the desert, you're like rolling around through the desert. Uh -huh. It's got that kind of like Mobius art style. Um, really, really beautiful game. Or like Gris, for example, is another one. Did you? Guys oh, yeah. Games? Yes. Yeah, cool. Very familiar with Gris. So there's those games you kind of just like feel. And then you're like, well, should I do a 15 minute review on this talking about performance and level design? And no, that doesn't really make sense. It's just like try and communicate what you felt to your audience through the review process. And so it's more succinct and it's just different verbiage. And it's kind of just like, it's a different thing versus you're talking about reviewing Marvel's Avengers and you're like, all right, how do we explain why this is such a fucking mess? And that's its own process that takes 45 minutes of going through all the components. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, but all of that is really just about um, me. I think the number one question I ask myself when I review a video game is what did I feel when I was playing this? And then how do I communicate that feeling to the audience? That is ultimately it. Um, and I think, you know, you say like, oh, I'm a blubbering mess or whatever. When I explain things, I'm like, well, no, I think that's exactly what people would want to see when you're reviewing a video game. I don't think it does need to be scripted. I think it just needs to be your raw connection or emotion to that thing. That's what oh, people shucks. would want to see. <laughs> that's what people want to see more than anything else. You know what I mean? So that's personally um, what, I, what I focus on. Like my own personal perspective, my own take. But at the same time, I also try and obviously meet some hygiene factors, particularly as I do PC games and many PC ports are a disaster. 
So I will often spend quite a bit of time being like, does this game run like shit? Question mark. Here's all the ways it runs it's, like shit. Give me 15 minutes to talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that so, um, that's honestly yeah. become like a major thing, I think, in the yeah. past two or three years. And probably even longer for that is like, how's it run? Because so many of yeah. the games just don't work that well from a PC yeah, yeah, yeah. point of view. I, 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 and I would love to just totally drop the performance and Neo out of... Yeah. Say again? Yeah, yeah. It's a cr- huh? cries, 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 and woe long, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. Neo, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, and, sure. Yeah. Wild Hearts. Uh, yeah, really Wild awesome. Hearts, for example. I loved Wild Hearts. Loved Wild Hearts. But man, it just ran like shit, you know? Yeah. I would love to drop all the performance stuff out of my reviews. I think they're the most boring sections. I hate it. Well, you know, and Digital like Foundry handle. exists, right? Like, so te- yeah. Digital Foundry exists, <laughs> but the, the challenge with them is that they often um, will take a little bit longer because they're so thorough. You know, it takes them a bit longer to get their stuff out. And so people want to know on day one, like, is this a safe purchase? You know what I mean? And so I try to bring that when I can. But at the same time, if I never had to do another technical block in a game review ever again, it'd be too soon. You know what I mean? Because it's not interesting. It's not fun to watch that stuff. You just want to be able to know, tick, yes, this game runs well. That's it. But unfortunately, (laughs) the, the current state of PC gaming does not allow you to do that. And so you do need to go into quite a bit of detail with it. So Yeah. it Your... Your answer to Zeke's question prompted so many more questions that I have, so we can really take this in so many different ways. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm curious, just right out of the gate, is it harder to review a good game or a bad game? Or is it too nuanced um, to answer that? I think, I think no, I would say it's really, really hard to review a really good video game. I would say that. The easiest reviews that you can do are for really shitty games, right? <laughs> because you can point you out like, why they're shitty. Well, because it, it's so obvious, and you're just like, oh god, like Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance or whatever that was. That what was it? That's it. Yeah, it was cool. Cause, oh, oh yeah, that yeah. was like, oh. Yeah, we, we did sponsor like, streams like, for that. That was a f- yeah, fun we sponsor. Did. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> that was great. But you guys don't know. You guys don't know what the game is like. I always think about no. streamers who are in that position. You have no idea what the game is like when you sign the dotted line, and then you're playing this thing, and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I, yeah. I have sympathy for you in those moments, but. Yeah, like you play those games and you're just like, fuck, this fucking sucks on so many. Can I swear on this, by the way? Or is this no, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, please yeah. don't swear. <laughs> you're going to hurt our YouTube algorithm, you know, our nice. ad okay, percentage. They, up, they updated the profanity thing. No, no, you're no, allowed no. You to can, do it now. We're outside the first 30 seconds. As you long can, as we can quote your your swears on the thumbnail, like just like, course, that's yeah. right. you can, you like can swear as much it. as you want. I was joking. It's Australian. <laughs> um, yeah, but like you play that and you're like, oh, this sucks. This is terrible. And it's just, it just, there are so many bullet points for why it's bad. And also, realistically like it's it's a fact that negative reviews do better you know what i mean like it's a fact and you don't ever want yeah and i mean i never go into the review process thinking oh yes negative review that's great give me views because the, the fact is it also has kind of a negative impact on you because a lot of people will say oh i hate skill up he hates every game and that's not true but what's happening for them is that they don't seek out my content. They only see the stuff that is surfaced for them by the algorithm and negative reviews are more likely to be surfaced by the algorithm. And so therefore, there's a section of people that think that I just hate everything versus the reality is about 15% of my reviews are negative. And I know that because I, I actually put everything up on Steam that I review, positive or negative. And yeah, about 15 to 20% of my reviews are negative, right? Yeah. Um, so coming back to your question, reviewing a bad game, very, very easy reviewing your average game. It's fine. Just whatever, whatever you, what do you feel? But I I find it very intimidating to review really, really excellent video games because it's almost like, it's almost like humbling. I know that sounds really lame, but like, I'm so blown away by what developers are able to do and accomplish. Like it's so like, like Red Dead 2 or like God of War, or like Outer Wilds, for example. Like I'm actually have not reviewed Outer Wilds because I'm too scared to actually review. Out- I don't know how to say. I don't know how to do it. Do you know what I mean? It's like it truly really is. Did we just become best friends? By the way, I just want to ask. Did we become <laughs> best friends? Because Outer right? Wilds is one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> um, but it's like you just sort of marvel at what these developers have been able to accomplish, and then you think, well, how can I do that justice in the review process? And oftentimes you know you just you feel like you can't and then you feel like oh, everything you write is shit you know and yeah so so most of the games that i really love 
I'm never really satisfied with the reviews that I've done for them. And some of them I just have been too scared to review. You know, like, as I said, Outer Wilds is a good example. Final Fantasy XIV is another good example. It's like, how do you mm. do that game justice in a single review? I, I, I had planned to do like a multi-part review back in the day and all these sort of things, but the, to do that, yeah, it was just, I kind of eventually gave up, sadly. But, yeah. um, and I saw yeah, that face, JP. You back off. He was my best friend first. But- <laughs> <laughs> well, look, he, look, he rated in Destiny, Zeke. So, like, we're on, uh, that's pegged down uh, for you, yeah. peg up for me, right? There so we go. All right. All right. So, yeah, so, 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 ice cream later, I guess I'll go. <laughs> uh, so, bad game, easy, very, very good game, very hard to review, I'd say. What, uh, like, what's the process for you? Do you, Play the game. Do you take notes yeah. while you're playing? Do you yep. like? Are you writing the script as you're playing through the game to remember important notes? Do you are you capturing all your footage while you're playing the yeah. game? Yeah, yeah, I do. I capture everything as I play. And it's funny because I listen to I I know certain like IGN and Gamespot and whatever else they would have someone play the game and they would have a separate person doing capture for the game. It's a really weird. Pro- I'm like, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense to me. Just like. Hit the button while you're playing, while you're playing get the footage. Yeah. And that's actually the back the backbone of my notes. So when I'm playing, I will take some notes. But what I will often what I will do more than that is I will play and then something will happen. And I'll be like, huh, that's triggered a thought. And then I would like stop the recording there and I would label the file that thing that's occurred. I'd be like, oh, you know, um upgrade menu, or I'd be like, oh, enemy AI janky or whatever. Or even I've had some thought on the story or whatever and i would literally just name the file that uh and then that becomes the backbone for my notes and i would look through the file names and then that's what i would script on and i would write my script and that usually comes out to you know four to six thousand words i would record that terribly full of errors <laughs> and hand that to my editor and be like good enjoy. luck enjoy <laughs> good luck oh, with wow. that so, do, so you, do you generally give your editor like all of the, the, the run all of the playthrough and be like just yes make magic yeah, but again the yeah, the two things with that. The files are labeled sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And um, and then obviously there's the script as well. But also Austin, he's my editor, shout out. Um, he's just so talented and like he's the best thing ever. If I would be so fucked without Austin. I would like have to quit YouTube without Austin, right? Austin and he Austin just- writing his uh, his raise. <laughs> right. Let's right go ahead now. and just ask right. for that yeah. uh, 20% totally. raise this year. That's right. Yeah. Um, no, he's saving he... a clip of this un- under like resume <laughs> <That's> clip. <for laughs> right. He's future. capturing this. You're totally. right. yeah, 100%. But um, he knows what to find. Like he, because he plays games as well and he's, and he's very smart. And so he just knows when I'm, what I'm talking. And also we have kind of like relationship now where he knows what i'm thinking he knows what i would expect to see when i'm talking about something right. he can just find it and it's amazing sometimes i'm stunned i'm like how did you find that clip buried amongst 50 hours of footage how did you find that one clip and he's like you know this is what i do and it is <laughs> this is what he does so um yeah have, yeah, have that's, you ever so that's had essentially the process have you ever had an edit come back to you that had a uh like different message than what you had intended or does is the edit usually matching your intended uh you know message from the get-go yeah yeah always 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 i mean w- there's always like little things in the edit where i'm like oh that clip doesn't quite communicate what i was talking about so we need to change that one up or or yeah. or i might say well that actually you know contravenes um contradicts the point because you're showing this where it's that and so yeah there's always that little bit of back and forward but that really represents like five percent of the process because as i said he gets he gets it right first time 95 percent of the time so yeah. yeah and it's always on me and anyway it's like it's me i should have given him more direction about what i want i obviously wasn't clear enough about what i was saying and so that also is helpful because then i can like tighten up the script and i'd be like okay well maybe i wasn't quite making sense when i was saying what i was saying you know what i mean yeah yeah makes sense so yeah uh, did you mm-hmm. start out by editing your own videos i'm i'm guessing yeah is yeah that- of course definitely okay. how yeah, long did yeah. it take before you were actually like fuck this i mean I, <laughs> this, this is garbage yeah, and how did you yeah, find it? Him? Was was that was Austin a fan? Like that's kind of a two part question. Austin was a fan. Yep, he was. He was. He was. And um, so we just put out basically just put out a call on Twitter, and then um, you know, um, Austin responded, and it was about three years, I guess. Again, you kind of have to hit that critical mass where you can justify the expense because obviously it is mm-hmm. expensive to have an editor, but eventually you get to the point where you're like, well, it costs me money if I don't have an editor because it gives me yeah. a lot more time. Headroom. Time is money, man. Yeah. Yep time yeah exactly and so you're like well i have to do this at this point and so it's a bit scary at first and that transition to build up above that cost is a thing but yeah eventually you get to the point where you're like no this is definitely the right call 
Yeah, so. You so, yeah. Wait, oh, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to go into a very large discussion. So go ahead, Co. <laughs> okay, just just a quick one. So I'm I'm interested in this. I'm I'm sure how you play a game these days is not how you played a game before you started like the idea of like you know stopping and and doing work and then going back into the game and stopping and doing work does that change gaming for you at all yeah um you ever yeah. just turn that off and say no i'm just gonna play this game can you turn De that off? yeah i do with with destiny that destiny ah. is like my one game where i'm like this is just for me now. I mean, I do make content around Destiny, sure, of course. But most of the time when I play Destiny, it is just for me to enjoy. Uh, outside of that, most of the time when I'm playing video games, it is for work or it's with a view to it perhaps becoming work. You know, like, oh, I might make content on this. You know, Exploratory I mean? I playthrough kind of thing, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so, yeah, definitely changed my relationship to games in a... In a bad way, in one sense, because, yeah, you've always got that in the back of your mind. But to be perfectly honest, it's actually been net positive for me because I, before this, was someone that would just play a lot of World of Warcraft. <laughs> and I'll just play that for 10 years straight. Thank you very much. And that's all I need to do. And uh, and then before that and then after that, I would play just just Destiny. And I'd play little games. I play other games along the way. Don't get me wrong. Um, but my point was that I would just put inordinate amount, amounts of time into those big MMO style games. And then I would touch some of the bigger stuff. With this career now, it allows me to play so many more games and constantly discover new things and, and experiment around, particularly with indie titles. I never played any indies before I was reviewing games. And obviously the indie scene has kind of blossomed in the last 10-ish years anyway. But um, yeah, so for me, it has been a net positive uh, relationship to video games because of the way that I'm able to play them. And I guess variety streamers, you guys are in a similar boat because you get to play whatever you like versus if you were just Apex streamers 24 seven, you probably have a very different relationship to video games than you do right now. You know? Right. Yeah. Very Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, so you mentioned IGN cool. a couple times and I think there is a much larger, constantly ongoing, constantly stoked, discussion with this like game review conversation yes and you're a part of that in the sense of you're outside of the ign the game spots you know these mega mega review websites that have existed for i don't know 20 plus years at this point how do you as a youtuber combat that and where do you think your role is within the space is it do you see yourself as an ign do you think your viewers see yourself as an IGN? Is, is it's a it's a bigger question, so you can kind of take it wherever you want. But it, yeah. Well, I would say first of all, I don't think you ever lose views on YouTube to anybody else. You only lose view to, you, uh, viewers to yourself, right? And what I mean by that is, uh, YouTube is not a zero sum game. Mm. It's not competitive. If you are ever in decline on YouTube, it is not because someone else is eating your lunch. It's because you have not been like listening to your audience well enough or, or evolving your own content or whatever else, right? Now, wait, so, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're saying hot tub booby streamers are not stealing my viewers? <laughs> <laughs> I well, I don't know, down, man. I thought I unless was, you are I in the hot tub booby for... category, maybe you are. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've been oh! I've been watching the wrong streams. I guess you've been in the wrong. I was gonna, category. I gotta change That's my the categories. That's probably why That's right. I'm tagged as that, and I don't do <laughs> that. Right. I should probably. I was gonna say you're in a bit of a different category, Zeke, because like many, I tune into you for your breasts. So when there are other <laughs> breasts offered, like that is a direct competition. That's true. That's fair. Cheers. That's a Skill good, up. Cheer, yeah. Cheers. Good review. That's a, <laughs> a good review. Quality time to Absolutely. take a drink. It is. Yeah, so. it is. You reviewed that with emotion, and I appreciated it. <laughs> and, and integrity, I feel. Integrity. Um, integrity. So, 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 yeah, no, I, I definitely don't see myself in, like, competition with IGN or anything like that. I think we are running quite a different race. Um, I think... He, my guess is, I think your average person these days goes to IGN, GameSpot, Eurogamer, et cetera, for a baseline understanding of what video games are and whether they're good or not, in adverted commas, 
at a very kind of, as I said, baseline level, okay? Sure. People want to know what's the IGN score, and that helps calibrate their thinking at that point. What happens after that, I think, is that people then seek out the people that they trust, right? They seek mm-hmm. out the individuals, and they're going to go to myself, or they go to ACG, or Matty Plays, or whoever else, whoever they've got to relate, or they go to their favorite streamer, you know, of course. And they say, well, you know, what is like, what is, what does Ko think about this game? And, and Ko's playing on stream right now. I'll go check that out. Hate it. The, IG, the IGN reviews and these sorts of stuff, they're sort of, as I said, I think they play an important role as, I don't want, that's not quite right. I don't think that's why. That's not the only reason why people go to them, of course. Don't get me wrong. There's lots of different reasons. But I think broadly speaking, that's how, that's how I use them. Uh, and I think that's how a lot of people use them, mm-hmm. but I do think the people seek, then seek out the people that they have a personal relationship with and that they can trust on some level because they know this person likes the same thing that I like or whatever else. And I think that's one of the problems with the way that those, um, review houses like IGN or those big media outlets structure their reviews is that they, they don't really put the personalities front and center. They have bylines, yep. of course. Sure. But, you know, it's, it's sort of like you just, it's an IGN review rather than a Mitch Saltzman for re- review, for example. And he's a friend of mine who works at IGN and he does fantastic work, particularly on really hardcore like gamer games, you know, like your fighting games and your Dark Souls and whatever else. I know his name and I seek him out because I know he does really good reviews, right? But I think that's only because I know him. I don't think IGN does a lot of work to elevate those people so that people can think, oh, okay, I know that's a Mitch review, even though it's appearing on, an I- on IGN's website. That is a guy I have a relationship with. That is a guy I can trust. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's the, and I think IGN will probably get there. They're starting to do some like column stuff at this point to lift the profile of their individuals. But right now, I think it's a the lot of work advantage, to like change that narrative. It right is, now in the it space. is, it is, it is. You know, like a masthead is its own thing that kind of really buries everyone else underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. And the big competitive advantage that we have as independent YouTubers is that we are our own voice. People know us for that. And people, as I said, seek that out when they want to, you know, find out like, will I, will I like this? Because again, if I ha- if you happen to like the same thing that I like for the last 10 games in a row, it's probable that you're also going to like the 11th game that comes along. You know what I mean? And so you come back to me. Similarly, I have lots of people who are like, oh, I always watch Skill Up. Uh, I hate everything he loves and I love <laughs> everything he hates. So I watch him to be able to know if he says something's good, I'm eating well. You know, oh, I mean, if he says if he says something's bad, then I'm eating well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. um, yeah. So it's it's that kind of relationship. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I, I think I think the other thing too is is with an IGN review, you know, they don't really go past ten minutes in most of those. They hit the ten minute yeah. mark for ad purposes, and that's kind of that. So while they are usually they are reading a script that is written by the reviewer, you can only say so much. Whereas with you. You can do whatever the fuck you want to review. You, I think yeah. you were tweeting last night that you have a Destiny review and the script is an hour, right? Um, so over, an hour. over an hour. Over an hour. Yeah. Terrible. Poor Austin. Poor Austin. <laughs> <laughs> but does do you think that makes it easier for you and harder for them, or is it just variable degrees of nuance again, where everything um, is everything is hard at the same time? <laughs> yeah, They're I just mean, different. I yeah, like, I. I Again, I do speak to people who work for those outlets and right, they sometimes tell me it's really frustrating to have a word limit that they have to adhere to. And sometimes they'll just go, fuck that. I'm just writing 6,000 words because I feel like it. But oftentimes they are quite, they're quite restrained with, you know, we need to keep this tight and there's so much more they want to say, but they can't. So in many aspects, I actually kind of think maybe they have a harder job than I do because... You know, if I ever had to, I hate, that's why my videos are so long. I hate le- leaving stuff unsaid. You know, I really wish that my videos were shorter. And again, that's something I really admire about like Dunky, just just how succinct it is, you know? Yeah. Um, And I think that having to force yourself to cut a script down and keep it to its most essential elements, it's really hard to do. I hate doing it. So I just choose not to, but those people get forced to do it. So <laughs> in a way, like, yeah, I think they've got a tougher job than I have. Yeah. How long do you think that do you think the IGNs of the world and we keep saying IGN they're the biggest you can put GameSpot yeah, yeah. You can GameSpot put, you're yeah. a game yeah. sure there, there's multiple outlets you can kind of put in the same uh, yeah. spot in the sentence with them slowly kind of starting to change and and I think you know Giant Bomb started this trend 15 years ago where uh, it, it's more about 
having the identity of a person and finding someone that you agree with or disagree with on a review basis. Is no. that where IGN's headed ultimately? Or do you think that they will always exist as kind of the like, we're going to review every single game so that when you type it in on Google, we're the number one or top five or like we, we are the yeah. Kings of SEO and that's what we will always <laughs> be. Or do you think they are going to change to be more, you know, personality focused? Yeah. Well, I think the beauty of the likes of IGN is they, I reckon they probably get to have it both ways. They've got scale, you know, they've got a large operation supported by, you know, dozens of people. I don't know, maybe a hundred people plus across their different offices. Uh, and you've got people focused on editorial as well as back end, as well as marketing or whatever. So maybe they get to do both, you know, and, um, but I, I don't know, like I, again, I, I just, I just think that the independent voice that exists on YouTube or Twitch or TikTok or whatever mm. is always going to be a market for that too. You know what I mean? And so that's why I came back to I come back to at the start. I never think compa like com comparatively or competitively. It's just not like that in the world of content. I don't think again with streamers like you, you guys don't ever think, oh, this other person is is snatching my view. Do you think that by the way? It's a question actually. Do you ever think yes. other than the the booby streamers, yes. which we've already covered, Zeke, of course. But other than that, do you guys ever think, oh, this person's eaten my lunch on on the streaming side? Like, it's because of how times? Twitch works. The answer is yes. Yeah, there there right. there are absolutely times. Or if they're or if the channels are using nefarious techniques to get to where yeah. they are. Um, if someone's above you in a directory, like you oftentimes wonder but, why, and and you start to you know look at that. It's and not it's not the same as what you're talking about. Hundred percent. Because yeah, you're, what you're talking about is definitely it's it's like people that enjoy different flavors of ice cream, seeking out the flavors they prefer. Um, you yes. know, it's all still ice cream, but you're, you know, you, you find different enjoyment of different types. Um, mm. ours, I think is more of a technical nature. A well, and it's, yeah, right. <laughs> there's also the difference between YouTube and Twitch where like YouTube video, you can watch on your own time, whenever, any time of the day, a Twitch streamer. If you're live at the same time as the rest of the website, depending on who is live at that same time what they're doing and what they're doing and what they're playing. And if you're going to play the same game or, or whatever, right. There's so many variables to like, it's only one, a, a person can only watch one stream. Ultimately they can have multiple streams open, but you're really only going to be paying mm. attention to one stream. So I think competition, I don't think it's competition. I think it's just, you're vying for people's time on right. Twitch. And, and so it's a little different than like a YouTube where you can watch on it's, your own time. Yeah. It's caused me like, uh, to have to like years ago, but it it caused me to have to change my uh, idea of what I could do. You know, like I, there yeah. are games that come out like that are new release games that I can't touch business wise because they will tank my channel. You know, like if I play a a, a fucking Souls game and I don't have you know a day early or something like that over other streamers or some some sort of advantage. Like it just goes. Yeah. However, you know, I, 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 I but it affords me, the, afforded me the opportunity to find like weird shit that no, mm -hmm. no one else is playing, retro shit, like that kind of stuff. So, like, yeah, I, it, it's a different thing. I have to think about like, okay, this game I really want to play is having a, a release on this day. How many fucking people are going to be playing it? How popular is it? How hype is it? Is it under the radar enough where I can skate by and still do good numbers? Or am I gonna have to fucking wait? Like, like recently, I was like, can't can't play the Dead Space remake right away, no matter how much I want to. But now, since it's gone past, like I get to start it next week. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's Interesting. just Interesting. There, there's no like the other thing too is YouTube has an algorithm, right? Google has an algorithm. Yeah. Twitch yeah. doesn't have an algorithm. I thought, it does. I thought it does. I thought it. I thought it. Not in the same vein. Like discoverability These... is not there. It's very yeah. hard. Like These days, there there up. is more of an algorithm. There's like there's like recommended sections and there's featured mm. sections and you know the, yeah the, there's something there, but it, it it's not you can live and die by the algorithm on YouTube. Yes, it's it's not the mm. same here. It, it's not you know if if you're gonna be on a big channel, you're gonna you're gonna be a big channel regardless of any algorithm kind of thing. Right. Um. Which I mean, it's kind of the same for YouTube, but not it's it's different. Same yeah. but different. So, yeah, for sure. So. so. Um. You mentioned, uh, you know, we're, we're talking Twitch, YouTube. Let's talk React streamers. What do you think of them? I mean, I, I fully honest, I watch your videos on full on my channel while streaming. Uh, whenever you put out a review. Oh, 
That's fine. Yeah, oh. that's totally. Fine. I, I welcome that. <laughs> I thought 100%. that was a general. Like, what do you think of reaction? No, 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 no. no, no. I'm, like, I'm just saying, like, people that watch your videos on stream, are you? Is how do you feel about that? Hot, love it. Hundred percent. Love it. 100% yeah. Love it. Totally. What, support what it. is yeah, the totally. best thing that someone like myself who watches the video in full can do to where it's not just literally ripping off your content? I mean, I my thinking on this is to is like I'm. A, 100% okay with people watching my content live because I'm like, well, okay, let's say that person has 6,000 concurrents, okay? Did I lose 6,000 views then? No, I don't see it that way because like the vast majority of people in that moment would not have been watching my, gone to watch my view, my channel eventually. You know what I mean? Let's say 40 of them might've been out of that 6,000. You know what I mean? Let's say whatever. I don't know. But either way, it just doesn't bother me at all. I think it's totally fine. It's content. It's like advertising per se. So it's fine. Where I draw the line is when people then upload that reaction to YouTube. And I'm like, no, nah, not okay with that. Fuck that. Oh, and I ask them to take it yeah. down, right? So, which I have done in the past and I will do again. So, um, again, totally fine with people reacting live because I think it's a totally different ecosystem, you know, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's, it's gone in an instant. You know what I mean? Like you've watched the thing and then you move on. But people who then re-upload my content to YouTube so that people can then watch it there, that's where I'm like, okay, no, I made that content. That's that's not okay, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think this reacting to content, I think is look, it's a very complicated kind of ecosystem for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and absolutely. as someone that's a big fan of like Dark Viper and has taken in everything that he said on the subject, and agree with the vast majority of it, like yeah, there's definitely a lot to be said on it. Um, there's no clear cut kind of. It's, it's really hard to say anything definitive because there's so many other things you could say in response and whatever else. But I would just say personally, totally fine with people watching my stuff live. That's okay. Um, I respect the live ecosystem. I respect the streaming ecosystem and what that is, right? And I know people view it differently, but that's how I see it. But again, when it comes time to um, upload that those reactions to permanent long form platforms like YouTube, I'm like, no, thank you. Go, I think there's a child behind you. There's a child behind you. <laughs> He's sort of like, oh my lord. <laughs> <Lord. Hey. laughs> oh my god, guys. Yeah. That's right. You want to you want to watch your Okay, mom mom can help you. Oh my lord, you are sneaky. No, mom can't help me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man, that was pretty good. I just I just love okay. him. We're thinking only play. He was just singing. <laughs> Good stuff. I gotta go fix something. I'll be back in okay. a minute. All right, you do oh, you. Man. You do you. Go for it. Understand it. TK. Understand it. Um, you mentioned like you know, uh, uh, a streamer's got six thousand views. They watch it. It doesn't get yep. uploaded, etc. What about the inverse of that? When someone watches it with a massive audience, twenty five thousand, you know, twenty thousand plus viewers, and they also so. have you know the the industry at large the, the, there's like a sub industry around that streamer to where not them but the fan yep. base will then take that and put on youtube and those videos yep. become bigger than the original video yeah how does that yeah. work like has that happened to you uh and, and yeah, if so like what is the is there a benefit when that happens or is it all bad uh i, I well I, I almost don't really think of it in a benefit kind of framework. Like I, again, if I was smaller, right. And on like kind of on the up and coming, yeah. I might think, oh, cool. Some exposure and whatever, even though the exposure argument, I think is actually quite weak as Dark Viper has talked about extensively. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I very much approach it from the principle fact, like perspective. So even though I see a video is going really large and, you know, it's, it's getting huge amounts of views and I could interpret that as free advertising or exposure or whatever. I'm just like, well, the principle of the, of the matter is I made that video, you know, I, I invested that time and whatever else. So I'm not okay with then people like profiting off that, um, just for sitting there and, and watching it. You know what I mean? Um, and so again, that's, again, people are profiting off that if they're watching it live, of course, that distinction is not lost on me, Right. but I do have respect for, as I said, the live ecosystem for what it means to be streaming. That thing is something that I go, okay, cool. I get that and I'm okay with it, but YouTube is where I draw the line there. And so, um, no matter how big it was, if that video had 15 million views and was like so much exposure, I would still say, no, take it down. That's take it down. Point. 
it's it's a uh, an interesting thing because the second you do that right if if the person in question wants to they could say like hey uh the person that video we watched yesterday told me to take the video down and then you have yeah. a horde of fans that are like well fuck that guy right uh believe and- me when it comes to that i've had more than my fair share of fans coming at me saying fuck that guy <laughs> sure <laughs> again yeah. it's one of the it's I mean, one that of the comes benefits the territory of, like- of a review i think these days where it's exactly. so incendiary to have an opinion yeah right yeah 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 and again if, again if you're smaller or less experienced as well it's kind of like because i've had years and years of people like being very angry at me for my opinion on things i'm very used to it if you know what i mean yeah but if like again if you weren't as used to that and you had like a big streamers audience coming after you that would be hard i 100 percent agree with that that would be that would be tricky for sure i can and i can understand why someone would be like no it's not worth that noise i'm just gonna like wear it you know but um i don't know i i i personally hope that some reform comes to the react uh, ecosystem overall i don't think it's healthy um yeah I, I do think it's exploitative a lot of the time and um yeah i i don't i'm not saying that react content should exist because i think it should absolutely there is definitely a a place for it but i think that a lot of work is getting ripped off um people are working really hard and then other people are profiting on that profiting from that and i don't think that's fair and i think there should be something in the future to like tidy that up a bit you know what i mean so yeah. Like, for instance, if there was some way to directly tie it, so like the React content was tied to the original monetized thing. by the original so, thing. So, yeah, well, kind of like, you know, exactly. you can have overlays in OBS. Like, if you could, if you could have like the YouTube video was an overlay itself. And then if you react to it and put that in your YouTube, well, it links to that YouTube actually being behind that. So you're actually watching like both at once kind of thing or something. So, yeah, that's, that's a that's, cool idea. There's all those huh. sorts of things I think would be yeah. really interesting to explore for sure. Yeah. Does that, sure. does that come from like a, a plat, like, YouTube, the platform needs to implement these types of things. That would, that would be a technology. Yeah. Like they would yeah. have to, they would have so. to do that. I, if they did do something like that, that would, that would revolutionize react content. Cause then you'd see people encouraging it. You'd see people leaning into it, you know, like they're, it would, it would do away with all this kind of negativity that comes from it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be sure. wild. Yeah. It would, it would almost like uh, solidify that as like an actual thing. Instead of just this like yeah. weird fringe content that exists out there. Totally. Kinda. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, um, you ahead, were Dave. talking about, uh, you know, the, the you you mentioned stuff about, and it just brought up something that I I I want to ask you about because you're a YouTuber and I'm live streamer. Um, is it like fuck that guy? You know, stuff like that. What is your relationship like with your fans? Because on Twitch, I be like i know a lot of these people personally like v- sometimes very personally um by their screen names by what they say and stuff like that and i can i can converse with them on you know a one to one basis because they're live you know uh, mm. i can have asked questions or have questions asked of me and i can answer them like what is mm. your relationship with your fans like well i i definitely feel very uncomfortable with the term fans if you know what i mean like that really? that term already kind of yeah 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 i don't like it yeah like it's influencer just, i mean we are uh, yeah, yeah. Sure what what do you call yeah. yourself are you, an what, do you call, what, do you, what do you call your yeah, what do you call yourself and what do you call the people that that in that you mean <laughs> <laughs> that size like great I, <laughs> yeah i i hate it. i like uh i guess god it's like all of it viewers? sounds lame all of it <laughs> All of it sounds lame. No, but I, I, for me personally, I would say in the strictest sense, what am I? I am a games critic. Like, I think that's what I would say in the strictest sense. <laughs> no, like chat. He doesn't call them peasants. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, no, I think because I think the word the game critic uh, really removes a lot of the parasocial um, connotations associated with what it means to be a YouTuber or an influencer or a streamer or whatever. Right. Yeah. That's why I like that term above others, because it's quite. Um, it's cold almost, you know what I mean? And I think, uh, part of what I, the way I try to exist on this platform is to really build quite a wall between myself and any potential parasocial relationships that could emerge. Um, I don't like it at all. I'm just not about it. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just, it's just never been a thing that has clicked with me. Um, and so I'm always very appreciative of the people that watch what I do very appreciative and um yeah there's no way that i could exist on those on this platform without those people supporting me 
And I think I do have that very health. I think I, in broad sense, have a healthy relationship with my audience where they watch for me, me for my content and my takes, but not for me as a, as a person is not the right way to say it. But like that parasocial line, people don't try and cross that with me. You know what I mean? Because I don't invite it. I don't create any space for it, you know? Sure. Um, so, yeah. So that's why when you say like fans, I'm like, ah, uh, fans. I don't know. Pe- uh, people who watch Skill Up reviews, are they fans of Skill Up? I don't know. I like to think that they just happen to like skill up reviews. You know what I mean? Rather than being fans of skill up. I know that's like a weird distinction. That's kind of like how I park it in my mind. You I know mean, that's I mean? your distinction, and right? You're allowed, you're allowed to yeah. think of that however yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I yeah, think your, yeah. your audience will understand and, and should understand and draw that line themselves as well. Um, yeah, totally. Totally. Um, so yeah, just, um, I, I was curious, mm. so I, I Googled before I asked the question, you, you have a Patreon. How does it come yeah. when it when it like when you try to monetize that audience? Is this a do you think of that as a transactional, a service like for X amount you'll get this? There's no parasocial interactivity here. No, You're not again. gonna like sit down and, you know, help me choose what game to review or or however you no, want to look no, at it. Again. Yeah, and I think I, in the past, had kind of invited some of that stuff through the Patreon and through other platforms and was trying to like think of a more collaborative relationship with my audience. But I think I often would just kind of disappoint them because, you know, they'd say, oh, we want this. And I'm like, well, I, I would love to deliver that, but I can't deliver that. So I'm so at that point, I kind of pulled back from that. And so, you know, the Patreon has a very specific function around like, you know, Q&A videos, for example, where I just sort of have a bit of a chance to chat with my audience in a different context every now and then right. um, and some updates and whatever else. But other stuff outside of that is very much like, no, I think I don't want to. I, again, it's that kind of thing where I really hate disappointing my audience. I hate promising something and not delivering it. Uh, I've definitely done that in the past with previous reviews and people still bring up, hey, where's the Sekiro review? And I'm like, good question. Where is the Sekiro review? You know? <laughs> um, so, 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 um, yeah. So that's just how I manage that. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. What, uh, you know, you mentioned Sekiro. What's the, the hardest review you've had to do or, you know, not had to do in that regard? Is there one that like sticks out to where you're like, God, I really, I really bungled that one? Or I really got a ton of flack for that one, and I wish I wouldn't have said X <laughs> and, and phrased oh, yeah. it a different way, so I didn't, you know, incite a fan yeah, base. Definitely. Do you have anything where you you immediately come to mind with I mean, a specific review? Well, I mean, obviously, Cyberpunk to this day, Cyberpunk really? is still this review. Oh yeah, but not not probably not for the reasons that you think. Um, I think so, that just sucked for everyone, though, right? Like, well, th- this is the thing, right? <laughs> this the cyberpunk thing so anytime my uh my name is brought up anywhere online people will be like can't trust him after cyberpunk man can't, can't trust him. <laughs> yeah. and um and i get it because the thing about my review was that i reviewed it on pc top of the line pc and i was like and I had a lot of issues. That review, that review, by the way, has about 12 minutes devoted to bugs and performance. And, and it concludes by saying that if you can wait, you should not play Cyberpunk now until its bugs are fixed because they are, they are, they are so numerous, right? Right. However, this, this was at launch. there has been- Like launch This was at launch, right? Yeah. There's obviously been a lot of like folklore associate or like- misremembering of things when it comes to cyberpunk and that time and that review and whatever else. And so a lot of people would say, you never spoke about bugs in your review. You never said there. And I'm like, yes, I fucking did. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but, but, but I, but I, but I understand why they say that because the tone of that review was quite celebratory. Cause I was like, I really, really liked cyberpunk at launch, even though it had these, the multitude of issues. I really liked it. And for me, it absolutely delivered, right? On so many of the things that it had promised. Not everything, of course. And again, I spoke about those in the review, but I was like, cool. But the tone of that review was like celebratory. And that review occurred before the console launch. And the real issues, there are issues, many issues with Cyberpunk. I'm nervous to talk about this because I know it's going to reopen the whole discussion. Right. There were many <laughs> issues with Cyberpunk, of course, on many levels. But the biggest one by far was the horrendous console performance. And, you know, people say, oh, you gave it a pass. Whatever. Oh, like, I was the only person who had an embargo review code for Cyberpunk 
that refused to upload on that embargo because I refused to use any of the provided B-roll that CD Projekt Red gave me. They said, you can only use B-roll for the initial review period. I'm like, fuck that. That's bullshit, right? Every other review used that or that embargo review used that B-roll. And I was like, no, that's not okay. Like when it comes to reviews, we need to use actual game footage so we can show people why this is so broken. And that's exactly what I did in my review. But obviously City Project Red kind of like, you know, like <laughs> wrecked the review process by refusing to issue console, co- console code. And right. that really poisoned the well, right? So, so, so the tone of that review is very much like Cyberpunk is cool. I love it. Then the console stuff hits and it's like, wow, I can't believe you said Cyberpunk is good. And I get why people think that because again, the, 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 the console performance was so horrendous and the blowback was so bad and CD Projekt Red so mismanaged it that any kind of review that has any sort of celebratory tone to it looks ridiculous. And I get that, I do, right? <laughs> but I also do think that that review, if you go back and watch it, like kind of, it does, I'm... I'm happy with that review. You know, like there's obviously some things I would change about it for sure. It was a heady time. Um, but I do think that on balance, that review kind of stands still to this day. Um, but it is absolutely the review that people throw back in my face and being like, ah, can't trust that shill up guy. He's <laughs> he's in City Project Red's pocket. You know what I mean? He just, whatever. You- the yellow chair, fucking yellow chair. Look at my chair. Is this chair yellow? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. It's fucking gray. It's not a yellow well, chair. A, I never got a yellow a chair. Miller, but says I, got a I yellow know that chair. chair. That's a good chair. That's an <laughs> that's HM, right. fucking awesome that's chair. That's Cyberpunk <laughs> review paid for that chair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you, um, uh, you said it, you said it though. I need to know, like, maybe we can, maybe we'll tackle this after this, but shill up. I want to know where that came, where that comes from. Like, oh, if, I, I where, don't know. where the progenesis of that was. I think, I think it was, it's, it's the, it's the obvious, it's the flip side to what I said earlier, but for some people are like, skill up hates everything. And then there's some people that are like, oh, skill up just loves everything and hypes everything. And he's in developers <laughs> pockets and shill up shill up shill up and i'm like oh i like that that's funny let's let's make it ours and so i started rolling with it you know what i mean and i was like and it's just i don't know it's kind of just a bit of an in joke with the audience now they get it and some people who see it online they're like what why is he shill up and they're like relax man it's a joke okay? it's, a joke, it's fine yeah. he's we're all okay with it you know? yeah yeah do you i mean cyberpunk's uh, the obvious example here but like the bigger the game are you more nervous about the review like do you put out a, do you ever pause before hitting live on a review or, or setting a, you know, scheduling a review to go live and think, did I do this right? Am I going to be mm. the outlier? Am I going to get yeah. shit? Do I read yep. these comments? How soon do I look at, th- am I going to go watch other reviews to see if they liked it? Like what is, what's the post process for a review for you? Um, well, yeah, first of all, to answer the first part of the question, definitely you feel that um reluctance on set well okay let's just say this for example big game that you don't like that's a bit nerve-wracking mm. like for example last of us 2 um when i put out that review i'm like okay most people are not going to because i had a sense of what the critics were going to say about it as well when i speak speaking to them or whatever right people talk and i was like okay embargo that just happens. Yeah, yeah sure and i'm like okay i'm going to be the outlier on this this is going to be pretty rough <laughs> um and sure enough it absolutely was um but yeah, like, again, it comes back to that point that I made earlier, which is like you, the most valuable thing that you have is your perspective. And if I had sanitized that to try and like, whatever, then I don't think, you know, and again, a lot of people say as well to this day, hey, can't trust skill up after the last of us Two review. He got it so wrong. I understand. I get it. Like it's, it's a, that kind of game that hits with people. And it's like, how could anyone not like this? It's such a masterpiece. I get why people have that reaction to it. I get why people would be so confused when they say that stuff, when I, if I was to say, you know, I don't like it, but um, yeah, I definitely felt that kind of reluctance there. If there's a big game that's dropping, that's not, that you don't like, like Callisto Protocol as well. I was like, I'm pretty sure this sucks, but maybe <laughs> some people think this is good. Maybe, maybe. And so I was like, when you kick, when you click the publish button and also, cause you're also aware of like people's expectations and right you know, that's, you know that's people so really much want it days. to be good you yeah. know it's like yeah. they, they really want the, everyone we all wanted the callisto protocol to be fucking great and we were so excited and when it and when it's not you're like wait what and then people are just like the biggest example of that is fallout 76 i preview i like 
did a preview. <laughs> I did a um I'm gonna go make stream. some popcorn. Right <laughs> <laughs> I did I did a stream of Fallout 76 back in the day in the beta. Mm. And I'm like, I just want to show everyone how fucking garbage this is. Okay. <laughs> and and that review, even right now, that live stream has like a 25% down downvote ratio. And uh, the review or the preview itself that I did for the beta, same sort of deal, like 30% download, uh, downvote ratio. People hated hearing that Fallout 76 was not good. Same with Anthem. When Anthem dropped, if you go and look right. at that review, that has quite a, like a chunky number of downvotes from the launch when people are like, I can't believe it. You are wrong. This is, this, is a, this is a good video game. There's no way this is bad. And then off you go, you know? So... Um, yeah, so so Fallout seventy six though was definitely a very instructive period for me as a content creator. I definitely learned a lot from that about people's willingness or unwillingness to see what is in front of their eyes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you, so. when, when does that affect the scripting that you feel like you have to constantly back up anything you're saying, and that's why the videos are so yeah. long, so that when you say X is shit. You quantify that it's shit so many times yes. so that the comment doesn't show up and say like, well, here's the, the, the you know, the, the one uh, exemption to the rule type deal. Like, are you constantly yes. battling that in your head? In fact, like earlier when we started, I talked about the fact that the scripting process is like a warm security blanket for me. And the reason it's a security blanket is because I've definitely been in multiple positions over my career where I've said some stuff like kind of before, like I've said some stuff before it was like a broader talking point. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I'm like, Fallout 76 sucks, guys. I was kind of like the first video to go up to say that, right? Yeah. Same sort of thing with Anthem, even like Destiny 2 at launch when it was vanilla, like very positive reviews and whatever else. And I'm like, guys, I think there's a problem with Destiny 2, right? And so I definitely have been in positions where I've had like a, a perspective that has put me in like out there or like a lot of hot water and then people really start picking apart what you say okay and over time i have become as i said more cautious with what i say because i because i'm thinking about well what happens if we get into a position where this this message gets out there and whatever else have i really backed this up have i really demonstrated my point like am i watertight on this thing you know so I think my shift towards 100% scripted reviews and being very careful with what I say is a direct result of all of the times in the past where I've, you know, found myself in a position where, you know, my perspective has landed me in this hot water and yeah, that's, that's that. So it all so ties let me, back. Let me follow that up. Are you looking forward to Starfield? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yes, I am. But like, look, 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 look. I mean, I think Starfield is going to be a good video game, right? I think it's still going to be a Bethesda game, which means it's going to have all the Bethesda bullshit. I think anyone that imagines yep. that Starfield is going to be this other thing that we have never seen from Bethesda Game Studios before, I think they're crazy, right? Sure. It's li literally the same game engine updated. It's the same sort of like, you know, front on, hello, I am a quest giver. Let me talk to you for a... It's like, it's that. It's a big open world to explore and a, a sandbox to muck around in. Like, it's going to be that. And I'm okay with that. Skyrim is literally one of my favorite games ever. Morrowind, probably one of the most formative games for me personally in terms of shaping my view about what a good video game is i'm I a huge you. bethesda game i, I just want to say i love you i, I want to get married to you soon i mean that's like more a paraso a parasocial line. Line. Right. you got it zeke there's a line you're, right, you, a lot of right. Right. you're in the end there's, there's a, a lot of link right. between there's a lot of link between morrowind and out of Wilds. we should we talk about it at some point but um <laughs> but but um yeah, so so love Bethesda Game Studios in terms of the, their output in the past. Um, not as close to it, obviously, with the more recent offerings. Sure. And Fallout 76, I think, was just a really shitty product right up and down, like from its inception to its motivations to its delivery to its everything. Um, which, you know, but I also think it was part of that kind of like frog 
boiling in the water thing where we've had all these issues with Bethesda games in the past that we've kind of ignored. And but Fallout 76 just allowed us to see them all at once and be like, hmm, okay. So anyway, long answer short, I think Starfield will be fine. I think it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm also not expecting this kind of like seminal genre redefining experience. Like I think it's going to be a fine video game is my my personal prediction. You bring up Fallout 76 and I start to think of, of things like No Man's Sky, you know, games that, that redeem themselves as kind of these ongoing games. When you review an initial product, have you ever wanted to go back and review it six months after the fact, a year after the fact and say like, this game sucked when I reviewed it, but now it's actually yeah. pretty good. Is that something yeah. that as a reviewer you find important or is it I put up my review at that point in the game, that's where it exists. And if people find this, you know, a year after the fact, that's just what it was at that time. Like, how do you, yeah. what's your approach to um, that? It's got to be weird yeah. to review games like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's weird per se. Like, as in, I think that reviews are for the moment in which they are written. And that moment lives forever, right? And so when mm. people want to know what is the launch date of Destiny 2, there is a there is going to be any number of views, including mine, to, to show, okay, here's what it was. And um, and then after that, you know, you, you have a relationship with the game or not, and you might come back to it and re-review it. For example, like No Man's Sky, where I, um, you know, I did a review of it post-launch. And I'm like, hey, this is... Still not quite for me. I didn't really like it. But I was like, it's clear. They've done a tremendous amount here. This is cool. I actually re-reviewed Fallout 76 after they did their- Oh, um, so you, okay. What was it called? The Wa Wastelander out Wastelanders. update or something. Wastelanders. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is definitely a better game by many metrics. They've actually added some NPCs now. That is nice. Um, but I was like, no, I still think this is ultimately terrible and I hate it. Um, so- yeah, going back to a game, I think, makes a lot of sense in if, if it's a live service game. My Destiny coverage is an example of that, where I'm not only going back to a game, but kind of like chronicling its evolution over time. And one of the things that I really love on my channel is my coverage of Destiny. You know, I, I'm really proud of that coverage because I think you can watch the evolution of that game over time through my videos which, you know, interestingly enough, you can't experience in the game anymore because they've taken all that shit out, you know? Yeah. Which uh, yeah. is another whole topic. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think going back and re-reviewing re live, live games or games that have had substantial updates um, makes a lot of sense. It's purely just a function of do you have the time to do it? Um, and oftentimes I don't, sadly. But it's something I'd always love to do when it, when it makes sense. Sure. Just for, uh, I don't know, fun factor, if you Google Destiny 2 review... Your video is the one, two, three, four, five, six, eighth response on the first page uh, for your right. Destiny 2 The Witch Queen review. So you've got that okay. SEO. Cool. There we go. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Love yeah. to see it. Above yes. And interestingly fold, enough, baby. My yeah. <laughs> love the fold. My uh, Destiny 2 uh, Lightfall review will go live this week, by the way. That's, yeah, I was uh, I was going to ask you, you've week. done the raid. I, do you want to talk about that? I, the, well, does the, your audience want to hear about Destiny? I mean, there's like Co's how audience many, does not. thousands of people. <laughs> hey, Zeke's audience you know, does not. Know. Well, dude, it, at least you ask. Rami comes on and doesn't even fucking ask if we want to hear about Destiny. He just blathers on. That's about true. It I, I give very I, I think, reserved takes uh, on Destiny around here, only because me too. If it's just the two of them, they they just say, "Cool, I'm glad you're enjoying it," and they kind of move on, right? Like the the exactly. There's so much of a it's such an odd game because the conversation around destiny is like one, are you actively playing it? And even then, if you're actively playing it, you might even hate it more, right? Like you might even have stronger opinions <laughs> against destiny uh, than yep. is if you're not playing it, because if you're not playing it, then the answer is like, no, I'm not going to play that. Everyone that yeah, plays yeah. it is just always so upset all the time. Why would I play that? Because they're <laughs> upset. All the so it's like a very strange game. Uh, and I think like, there's a lot of games that fill that void. Uh, Destiny is, is similar in like League of Legends, which I play a lot of as well. Most people that play League of Legends will say, don't play League of Legends. It sucks. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely but not. It's, it's just the worst, worst game ever. You, you can't stop playing. Can't stop um, playing it. <laughs> that's, that's I had my League goes. years as well. I've, I've moved beyond those as well. So. Yeah, yeah. No, and, I, I and think Destiny... There's always something to replace that. So. 
yeah, I I think Destiny at a very high level is uh, like I think most of those games that consume a huge portion of your time are going to frustrate the audience regardless. Like WoW, for example, you know, played WoW for like 10 years and had nothing but complaints for WoW while I was playing it. And then you stop playing, you're like, you know what? WoW is a pretty good video game, wasn't it? Uh, it's just that when you're in the thick of it and you're and you're and you're thinking, well, this sucks and they're making me do this annoying thing for 15 hours and I get it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the thing that you're spending your time on. So it's obviously natural that you would like direct your critical faculties toward that thing, you know? Yeah. Um, But it is also in its own way, uh, a a testament to the value of those products because they do invite that kind of uh, tough love and criticism and engagement. And if destiny was truly shit, then no one would talk about it. It would, that would be it. It wouldn't be in the discourse and whatever. It would just that's it. Yeah. Um. So obviously, it's it's got that thing that keeps people. It's got a back, player base for sure. You and I know, right? Like they just crossed definitely, definitely. all time highs. Uh. Both mm. on on Twitch yep. with the the raid on Friday, it had its all time viewership high. Uh. And on yes. launch, at least on Steam, they crossed their all time uh player base high of of concurrent yeah. uh yeah. on on yeah. Lightfall launch. So yeah, Actually, it's um, it's really abs- it's weird. Really ex- I'm really excited because this week I'm actually interviewing uh, Joe Blackburn, the game's creative director on my, the FPS podcast. Right. Uh, so that'll be live this weekend as well. Any Destiny addicts in the chat? Do you know what day uh, that, just, that's going know, up so people that? can? That'll most likely be live on my Sunday, which is your Saturday. Okay. All right. And that'll be live on the Skill Up channel as well as on the FPS podcast, which you can search for on podcast platforms. Cool. I'm, I'm very surprised, yeah. one, that that interview is is just happening to begin with given the response Me too. <laughs> like a lot of times you'll reach out to to devs and they'll just be like no i'm not gonna go defend yeah, my game in front of <laughs> no no the no masses I know, I know. Or, or, or go Look, talk about my game in front of the masses type deal yeah and, and i definitely want to say the expectation like I, I i'm not interested in like having, having him defend and joe it. and yeah no, that's not it. Like that's, I think that would be a very inappropriate kind of conversation. Like, obviously I'm going to have, we, we all have some questions about like the different strengths and weaknesses of destiny, Yeah, but certainly not, it's not the intent for anyone that we invite on the show. And it'd be the same for you guys. to like, you know, like defend this thing, you know, justify this thing before my audience now, like that, that's not the right platform for that you know the unfortunate well, it's fucking counterproductive dude it's it's like we we're 100%. gonna invite someone on our fucking thing to like shit on them like we're not gonna get many more guests <laughs> after that right the, the un- <laughs> that's 100 percent true the unfortunate thing is no matter what he says no matter any any dev says anything on any podcast it's going to yeah. be used as ammunition for or against whatever support the person is intending to use that for and that's why you know I, I look at that type of stuff and i'm like man you guys are brave as hell like i wouldn't yeah as a developer of a game especially one of destiny i would never want to be i would never want to draw the ire of an entire community about anything (laughs) regarding that stuff yeah but like the also to bungie's credit you know like they are actually pretty out there when it comes to their community engagement you know like they they but it's usually kind of faceless right like it's it's like Uh, we as bungie are are saying this rather than a i wouldn't i wouldn't agree I wouldn't agree with that necessarily. I think they have made appearances on different podcasts and also creator channels in the past, for sure. Okay. Um, and I would say that more importantly, like, you know, DMG, who has obviously just resigned and um, he's moved on now, but he was very, very out there. And before that, that Deej, you know what I mean? Like, they're the people that were the community leads. And it was very much them as people being out there on those platforms and having those conversations. So, I would say personally, I think that they are more front facing than some developers, not as much as say, you know, digital extreme with the, with their community team who are very out there and like very present. Right. Um, and there's a number of studios that are similar to that model. I think, but Bungie are, you know, they're, they're present enough, I think. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I think that's the, I'm, I'm not going to ask you like, did you like this? I'll just watch your review. I'll just I'll wait for the review to come out. Sure, uh, sure. Of, of, I mean, look, I, I think it's. Well, I, I landed in an unsurprising place, which is that like, uh, campaign story sucks. Uh, rest of the expansion, pretty good. Pretty good. But obviously, yeah. there's there's some there's some big gaps within Destiny still to this point. Which it's like, can you fill all these gaps between now and the final shape? I don't know, man. That's that's the question mark. So yeah, um, hundred yeah. percent right. Uh, and mm-hmm. I, where do you for the future? Like, do you think they put out Final Shape and then Destiny Three is right after that? Or or, I, or I, destiny is right after that. Whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think it makes a lot of sense. And I know a lot of people, destiny fans, would hate this idea. But to lose everything, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I just, I'm okay with losing everything. Like, it's, for me personally, I play it to play it. I don't play it to, like, be a stuff goblin and, like, look at how many things I have. Oh, look at my, like, I don't, like, I don't care that much. Like, it's just, if you can replace it with better, more interesting stuff at the from the jump, rather than us having to go through a three-year period of the game getting good again, like we did with Destiny 2, then I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? And I also would welcome the opportunity for a bit of a reset and of the narrative around destiny, because I think it's so intimidating for new people. They're like, I can't possibly start destiny now. It's too late. I would love for there to be a moment where people feel like, yeah, I could start destiny. And like people would join this franchise and get into it. You know what I mean? And if destiny three is what it takes to do that, then I'm okay with that. So um, do I think Bungie will do that? I don't know. But I will ask I, Joe that this week on the podcast. So. Yeah, it's <laughs> God. I will say that's one of the main things keeping so, me away from the game. Like, yeah, like yeah, hundred percent. Like, it, I mean, that that's that takes away any any will to want to get into it is knowing that there's giant swaths of it that will probably never make sense to me. That I have to go watch hours of YouTube videos by people that didn't make the game. <laughs> yeah. It's just such a weird. Totally. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's so uh, then even removed from everything you just said, which I 100% agree with. They're now owned by PlayStation. So what hmm. does that look like? Right? Like, yeah. how does that yeah. factor into everything moving forward? Uh, it's, yeah, I, no idea. I, I just, I mean, obviously, we could all we could all guess, but we don't know. Like, we don't know what goes on in like the boardrooms totally. and the whatever else. And obviously, Bungie's working on some other project right now, which everyone assumes to be some sort of like PvP focused game. Right. Um, and then Destiny will continue to exist. They're not going to like retire Destiny. They're not going to leave this thing sitting on the shelf because it's too successful. So, um, yeah, but what plans Sony has for that? I don't know, man. No idea. Um, but I also think that Bungie, the, the deal they negotiated looks like they have a lot of autom- autonomy. So I suspect that no matter what path is set, it's actually set by Bungie more than Sony. You know, Sony will obviously need to sign off on it. But I do think that Bungie have the upper hand in that negotiation process because it seems like that's what they negotiated in the contract. Yeah. Uh, Final question, Destiny. Thumbs up, thumbs down on Raid. Did you enjoy it? I think it's a thumbs up as a Raid experience. I think it's a thumbs down as a day one experience. Um, tune into yeah, the review like, for more <laughs> that is very... basically yes essentially okay. yeah so uh, but again I don't think that's a hugely controversial or surprising take because it's it, with the raid was very um, the raid's very easy yes uh, surprisingly so when I discovered how all the mechanics worked on each encounter I'm like what that's especially the last boss I'm like what that's it very simple um, yeah it's one mechanic and, essentially yeah and I that's nice because I actually really like um dsc like deep stone crypt very approachable very easy very chill and it's nice to roll through that but it's also nice to have you know your last wish or whatever else which is like what the fuck i need to look up six hour guides on how to do this yeah i think there's room for both in destiny and i think it's kind of interesting that bungie does that whereas most other raids in most other games they're aiming for like a certain level they're aiming like it must be this hard and there might be plus or minus a bit but it's always going to be in that ballpark whereas destiny has this different approach which is like well one raid is going to be really hard and another one's going to be really easy and i think that's kind of cool in a way you know yeah it was not i I will say it was nice to not wake up on saturday the following morning and be like gotta go back to that fucking boss like i was (laughs) yeah 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 i I had i bought this like whole bag of snacks and these all like red bull and i was ready for like a 12 16 18 hour (laughs) session i was like let's go boy and then like we were done in four hours i was like oh okay well it's nice that we're done but at the same time Kind of sucks that we're done. Yeah. yeah. For uh, people that don't follow Destiny, the world first kill was two hours and 30 minutes or something like that. Yep. So it was yep, done yep, yep. relatively quickly. Um, yep. Much faster than than other raids within the game. Out of sure. out of the six names on the world first team, two of them I saw that. were names of my kids. Yes. Yeah. That's right. And that's right. Rowan was actually cool. spelled the way that we spelled it, which we've never met another Rowan who's spelled <laughs> like that. And I was just like, what is this? Yeah. Your kids what are actually secretly team? raiding like, Destiny. Is, I know, right? There was this, there was this yeah. fraction of a second where I'm like, do my kids play Destiny? It's great. And I just don't know it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, my mm. Lord, dude. Uh, I I wanted to include this in news. We can kind of move away from, from grilling skill up and just bring you into the, the full conversation here in the final 20 minutes of the show. Uh, did y'all see what Jim Ryan said? Uh, the the What's his proper title? The president and CEO of Sony Entertainment uh regarding the Activision Blizzard acquisition this past week 
Uh, he yeah. was quoted as saying, this, "Yeah, I don't want a new Call of Duty deal. I just want to block your merger." That's from what's the name? It's from a, a Microsoft VP, I think. It's from a, no, for an Activision, from an Activision or Activision, like Activision, Activision right? Yes, Activision. Yeah, uh, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I'm gonna completely butcher her name. Uh, Cheng Messervy or Messervy, uh, who's yeah, been pretty right. vocal on Twitter about all that stuff. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he said the quiet part loud. It, it, it's just <laughs> I like. We're getting down to the, you know, what, three or four months, I think, till that decision is made, uh, till most of the decisions are made around that, on if it's going to happen or whatnot by all of the different legislative uh, committees and all that stuff. I feel like the shit is kind of starting to sling. And, like, as an outsider, it's, it's like, a little refreshing to just see them straight up say that rather than kind of like the corporate speak that you get all the time. But also it's like... Yeah. What the fuck, man? <laughs> like, that's wild. But like, I, but like, also not like. I think people really roast you, Ryan, for this. But it's like that is that's 1, his job, thousand percent his job. Like yeah. that is if he was not doing that job, you'd be like, what? What are you doing, Jim? Like, so while I don't, I don't have a horse in the race for the Activision Blizzard merger or whatever. Like, I, I don't. I think it's bad on many levels, and I think it could also be good on a few levels, right? But bottom line. Of course, Sony should oppose it because that is their job as a company to do that. Like, it is not their job to, like, kind of help their competition get access to the most successful video game franchise in the world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't think yeah. every like, it's, it's, but it is funny when Sony do all the double speak and they're like, well, actually, our games kind of suck. And, you know, like, the, the, all these, like, they're all these companies right now are just sort of saying that. They're, they're not very competitive and their products are actually kind of shit if you really think about it. Like all that stuff is ridiculous looking, but it's just corporate spending themselves over to like get yeah. the job done. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm so curious to, to like, I wish I could tell the future and see what's going to happen. One with the actual, mm. you know, decision on, on how all that goes, but also just like the events leading up to that. There's, we're three or four months out from that. How much more of this are we going to see? Right. Cause a lot of it is also just public opinion. Uh, and, and, and they're, they're stoking the flames of the, like, you know, the, the silly console wars that have existed on the internet for however long now. And when this stuff oh. comes out, the people that are, you know, pro Sony or, or pro Xbox or whatever, they just add into their like repertoire of like, well, let's go ahead and have this into our gun where we could just <laughs> load this and shoot it, whatever we need to win an argument type deal. Uh, it's, yeah. it's very fascinating to see all that type of stuff, but. Other than that, there's been really no movement on it in the news apart from that quote coming out and people just running with it. Because uh, it is, you don't typically see that type of conversation uh, at all from like a CEO level uh, employee of any company. Mm. Um, mm. What else was out there news wise? Any, any, I mean, you did a news show this week, Skillip. You do a news show every week. Anything I for do. you that was like super big that you think is, is worth discussing here? Do my job for me, skill up. Make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> if, only, if, only, if only I had been briefed. Uh, uh, True. Um, uh, I mean, we got El City Elden Skyline Ring, too. Elden Ring DLC. Elden Ring DLC. Did you guys talk about that we last week? We talked about that. We talked about that last week, yeah. Starfield yeah, release date. Right, well Starfield release date got out there. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah, a week well, after I mean, Baldur's oh, Gate. What's, what's not exciting is it's a week after Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. I'm like that planning multiple 24-hour streams or something. Like, I don't know. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Man. It's gonna be yeah right uh, i totally forgot about that but i was those... expecting actually that starfield would launch in the end of june because there was that fa there was actually a um on uh, this uh bethesda website there was like an faq that said that starfield would launch in the first half of the year first half yeah and yep. yeah and <sighs> given the timings of e3 and whatever else i was expecting that which means it would have gone up against final fantasy 16 and, diablo and so 4. it's kind of like and diablo 4 so i'm actually much more okay with um with this timing uh so yeah yeah i think it, I think it personally i think it works and you said it's, oh it's, uh, september this is happening september yeah, yeah. september night yeah yeah yeah. Six. Nine, six. yeah we'll six. we'll see that's we'll the see. other like, thing I don't, trend, I don't fucking trust any fucking release dates anymore ever <laughs> that's the thing that's does Smart. it get delayed to Smart. to winter <laughs> potentially i'd be so surprised if it gets delayed again i just say i can't i can't see it would be so shocking if they did. Um, speaking of delays, we should talk about. Have we talked about Suicide Squad yet? 
No, no, no. That was this, okay. uh, this past we can come back week to as that. well. Yeah. But um, but uh, to, for them to to delay it indefinitely with no new date, and then to announce a date, you have to assume that they're pretty confident, right? Yes. You have to assume. You have to assume make it- that they're in, in their final bug polishing phase right now, uh, or at least they've polished as many bugs as they can in a Bethesda game. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's. I'd be surprised if it sh- if it if it if it sh- if it slips. Yep. Also, they've laid out a path now. So first of all, they made a fully you know curated release date thing. Had Todd do his I'm Todd Howard. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. You know, did that whole thing. So that's, <laughs> that's a little bit official. Leather jacket. Then they announced the June. Event. Yeah. So we're going to get the whole event in June, which is probably, and that's going to just be the, the big hype stepping stone right into September. If they delayed it after September, that would be very weird at this point. It's like they're laying out the roadmap. So that would kind of like make did the they whole do thing that fall with, apart. Did they do that with Fallout 4 after his presentation? Was there a delay? No, Fallout 4 was like announced in E3. No, and it just came out. Here it is. Yeah. Like okay. that was like one yeah. of the best releases ever. Um, yeah. But the game couldn't have been a little better, but it was it was pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yeah. Real quick segue of news. Also, did you guys hear about the Stalker Two stuff today? I saw you uh, tweet that, and I saw oh, their yeah. uh, their messaging. Yeah, that's that's awful. So what, basically, what? a a group of nefarious actors has obtained a bunch of their source material, and yeah, right. they are now blackmailing the company into saying things publicly and changing things in the game. Um, or they're saying they're going to release like all of it. Yeah. And this is like, oh. apparently all major art, all the cut scenes, like all the storyboards, like, oh, so, man, that I, is, I felt like as if the... this develop, as this, this studio I know right. through enough, like, get <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. That is so sad. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, I said this earlier and I'll say it again. I could, I could have memorized every single word that is the script and seen every single cutscene, And I will still play that game with a smile on my face from beginning to end and love every second sure. of it. Like, you know, it's, it's, and yeah. I think, I think a lot of people feel that way. At I think this you're point, not alone. hundred like, percent. Yeah. 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 A lot of people yeah. I think feel this way. Um, yeah. so, but it's you just, know, it's such a, such a terrible position to be in. You know, like I, I saw some people in chat and I don't want to get one guy, but like, was there a reply? Like a couple people were saying like, they replied and said, do it try it they, yeah. oh, no, no. If, if you look on my twitter they they actually released an official announcement saying the situation mm-hmm. and saying the we're gonna like stay away from the spoilers because they're gonna happen like, yeah we're they're not, coming out we're not we're gonna not change anything we're not doing anything like they're going to come out so you know if you want to avoid the spoilers do it it's they, they respectfully requested you don't repost the spoilers when you see them um you know on all them. the normal kind of stuff so i it, it's it's unfortunate because i feel like with with the grand theft auto leaks that happened a while back people saw that like how <laughs> how God. much of a like effect that can have for a company and so now nefarious actors are going to continue to do this because of the effect that it had in hopes that like the company will uh, you know bend to their demands but yeah, it's it's not a good situation for sure. That's a shame. It's unfortunate. Shame. Yeah. yeah. Uh you um, mentioned Suicide Squad. Uh yeah. now that that is a report that Jason Schreier is saying that it's getting delayed, not an official announcement yes. that it's being delayed. And the response Correct. was or or the 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 report was that they're delaying the game because of the response to it showing at that PlayStation event. No, no, no. It's not that at all. I, he, well, no, he did say it is being delayed. Okay. He did not say it was because of that negative re- response. I don't believe so anyway. Uh, I'll pull I it up. I think he just look. said, Let's see. yeah, I think he just said it has been delayed. Full stop. The game met a negative response from fans. Full stop. Right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But um, e- either way, like the delay that you're, uh, they haven't actually announced a new date. But the, the thing is, right, all the things that people were complaining about in that response, there's no way you can change that stuff unless you delay the game like two years, like all that stuff is hard baked into the game at this point. The fact that it's a live service, it's entire loot system, you know, like the identity of each of the heroes and their move sets, all of that shit is hard baked. Yeah. And so whatever delay is happening right now might be some tinkering around the edges. I suspect it's probably for like polish and whatever bug fixing and, and, and whatever, but I, I don't, I do not imagine it is a delay as a response to the negative feedback. Cause again, it's just, there's no time for that. Now this game has been developed for like eight years already. You know what I mean? This is like, you are, nah, it's not changing. You are correct. Uh, it, it's kind of odd. The bloomberg.com, the publication that Jason Schreier works for the headline on Twitter 
at least. I don't know if this is like an old cache. It says, Warner Brother delays Suicide Squad game again after fan backlash. The title of the Bloomberg.com article is, Warner Brothers delays Suicide Squad game again to add more polish. The article yeah, says, yeah. Uh, the delay is necessary mostly to fix bugs and improve aspects of the game that were lagging behind and won't overhaul much of the core gameplay that led to yeah, the backlash yeah, yeah. that person said, asking not to be named, discussing information that isn't public. Um, he also says, uh, this delay also moves Suicide Squad out of a crowded release window that currently involves the new Zelda, Diablo, and Final Fantasy games. So, yeah. Yeah. Are you guys, I didn't, I didn't see your responses to the Suicide Squad. Are you guys all on the same page with that as everybody else? Are you like, uh, this is kind of a bummer? Or are any of you like, yeah, I, that actually looks pretty sick. I'm down. I thought it looked fine. And then, like, as they started, I, I watched it live. So it, my sure. the reaction or whatever's out there where, like, oh, this looks cool. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, they, it was a layered, Brutal. the way that they did the messaging was like, here's what the game looks like. Here's how it's a live service. Here's how the gear has levels to it. Here's the battle pass. And it's just kind of like, okay, I see what this is now. Um, and I think that, you know, having Rocksteady attached to all of that is just like you look at like the pedigree that they have and you're like, man, like this is rock steady in 2023. Like this is kind of where they're at. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, the core game mm -hmm. could be great from a gameplay perspective, but it's in service to all of this other stuff that is now also coupled with the game. And that just kind of like, yeah. I think I enter into playing that with all of that already is kind of baggage and that's unfortunate mm -hmm. for them as, as developers. Cause like I love the sure. Arkham games, right? I think everyone did. They, they were I, revolutionary. That's exactly what I was about to say. I loved the old Batman games. I thought they were awesome. The combat was engaging. Like everything about them was cool. I have not played a game in those styles since those games, essentially like they've just been getting Spider -Man. progressively. Spider Man was pretty good. Yes. Yeah. I did like yeah. Spider Man and Miles Morales, but in terms of in like the Batman universe, um, sure. it was like, what's, what was the more recent, the, the recent one? Gotham that they did? Knights. Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights. Yeah. Like, well, that, that wasn't rock. Not, yeah. That was just Warner still, Brothers. Still, still, still. It's just like, yeah. it's, it's the same as a lot of the, the Marvel games for me recently. I've just totally. been kind of like, it's just, you know, well, they're you didn't not, like Guardians of the Galaxy. You didn't like Guardians of the Galaxy. I like Guardians of the Galaxy, but the one, the, the live service one was Marvel's was, Avengers. Oh, Marvel's, Avengers, Avengers, Marvel's yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, you know, I, hey, I'm, I'm always here for a good, like, you know, single player adventure kind of thing. And, and for the record, I loved Gardens of the Galaxy. Winning with Low Expectations mm -hmm. came out like digging it. I think it took a totally. top in my top 10 that year. Um, but yeah. Did you guys play of, Midnight Suns? Did you guys play Midnight Suns? I did. Zeke did. Right. You did? Yep. Yeah. You tried? You did? Co Co doesn't so, like when on. we talk about it, so we had to shelf the game. Why? <laughs> uh, it's not that I don't like it. We it's get just, the eye find, rolls, and I we're find, just like, oh, God. I find <laughs> the discussion of it, like the game, boring and very catering to the fans <laughs> of that franchise. It's not... It, Interesting. It's just, it, I, it, it, <laughs> I, I feel like it was... A, it was it was it was like it was it was a Marvel game for Marvel fans. I'm not a Marvel fan, and it's so it's so plugged in to Marvel fans and people that love that. And it's just 100. Like, percent I, I agree with that as well as 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 a Marvel fan. But it's I think it's plugged into like the comic book nerds, not the MCU. Yeah, guys. I was gonna say like yes. Yes. I haven't read a Marvel comic in forever, and there was characters in there. I was like, who the fuck is this Ghost <laughs> Who the fuck is this dude? I have no idea who that guy is. I don't know yeah, who yeah, that yeah. chick yeah. is. I don't know. Half of these people game play, like, oh, hey, Iron, Iron Man, I know you, Spider-Man, I know you. Yeah. The yeah, gameplay yeah, yeah, was pretty yeah. fun, but the whole, like, weird quasi-dating game Sims yeah, thing I agree. part of it was definitely just like, you gotta, really you gotta, like you gotta need to like those characters yeah. and want to know more I, to really kind of play. Yeah. I think they had yeah. such it, an uphill battle because it was just, same thing as Rocksteady, right? Like, Rocksteady's making a live service game, the XCOM devs made a Marvel game. Right, it's it's almost the same narrative where that just turned people off from the inception of the idea. You're right. You're right. Um, and now Jake Solomon's left he's gone. Axis, Sadly, yeah, he's gone. So, so but so I'm assuming he's going to start I his think. own. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming he's going to start his own studio and do his thing. So I mean, I'm sure we'll get an XCOM three at some point, but it won't be Probably. on Jake, which is a bit of a bummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they obviously they hold IP and all that stuff. So I would think we get an XCOM as well. Um, mm. And they're trying to. Sales wise, I think they were very open with the idea of like, yeah, it didn't sell that well. We're hoping that this has a lot of legs, like a lot of our other products. And they've 
they had a free weekend yeah. recently for it where yeah, the whole yeah, game yeah, was yeah. free. So they're, you know, they've got DLCs and stuff coming. So they're going to try to I, push it I all personally out. think the gameplay side of it was like superb. I think it was fantastic. I really loved it. And I would say anyone watching, if you haven't played um, Midnight Suns and you can get it cheap, I really would recommend doing so. And if you can skip through as much of the dialogue as possible uh, <laughs> and just focus on the fighting side of it, I think it's a really fantastic game. I really do. It's just that the other side of it is so much and so obnoxious that it's like it really drags the package down. You, you know? didn't love but doing um... uh, Blade's book club? You, I love that. <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. That was the... I, oh, God. Oh, I just, I, it's like PTSD just thinking about that. Man. Just too much. Just too much. What? Okay, just, I don't oh, understand God. What, was, what you love so much about the book club. I just loved how absurd it was. The fact that it was, it was a book uh, club with Blade and Captain Marvel and Captain America. And I, other was, I thought it was just absurd. I was waiting for something like crazy to happen because I was like, I was oh, looking the, forward to it. The idea you kept was talking enough about for it, me. And I was like, all right, I got to it. And I was like, this is just kind of like, but the, but the, the thing is like, <laughs> so was like going on a fucking picnic with Blade. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all strange. I thought it was going to be something even more <laughs> weird and ridiculous, but it, it ended up being like just another like side thing. And goddamn, like so much of that fucking game just seemed tacked on. It was side. Like yeah. I like the combat, man. I like that. I liked how that was laid out. That was a lot of fun. The strategy, the blah, blah blah blah, turn based shit. But like, goddamn, that's I don't know. You I mean I could have done without most of that story shit like there's yeah. a lot of it i i i would love if they they're not going to do it obviously there's no way but it'd be yeah. so cool if they like remix that game somehow just took and, it all out like and just took, took the core gameplay ripped all that other stuff out allowed you to do some like base building stuff a la xcom or whatever and they do so basically just make it marvel xcom <laughs> and remove all the fire emblem stuff out of it make that version of the game and i will buy it again do you there know what i mean go. like i'll do that <laughs> there you go so like produce your skill up support right there yeah. there you go uh yeah, right skill up we got a uh, five minutes maybe uh here at the end i know you've played final fantasy 16 do not spoil anything i will preface that because i the footage was spoilery uh if you are going yeah. to play the game thumbs up just out of your own i, I watched your, your yeah. thing on it so i know that you enjoyed it but seem, seems seems like it's gonna yeah. be a good win i think so i mean obviously it's really hard to say because you're talking about what's probably going to be a 40 hour game and who knows how it all shakes out but i feel like i really was interested in the characters from the jump uh it looks beautiful uh the combat is very engaging and i can definitely see how it has a lot of potential in terms of its skill searing ceiling and where it could go the boss battles were actually low-key fantastic and had elements of final fantasy 14 in there um soken is scoring the game and he is a genius yes he uh is. yoshi yoshi p is essentially leading it as the game's producer or the leader of creative business three uh, business unit three and he's also a genius there's just a lot of factors that make me go, this is probably going to rock, you know, um, and I'm really interested in it. And I'm, I'm just very optimistic. And yeah, I, I think it'll be good. It's a gut feeling. Two follow-ups. A lot, of, lot of good things in that yeah. project. Yeah. 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 How, how was that trip to Japan? Like that, it, that must just be walking around Square Enix studios and like yeah. what? i was actually walking around the event was hosted in the luminous offices funnily oh, enough geez um, okay that's yeah, kind of okay you know, that's maybe a little awkward kind of yes it is um but yeah no if you look square invited me and um you know i as i mentioned um uh i was there just for about five or six hours and um it was great and i the real thrill was just to, the chance to get to meet with those people that make the game extraordinarily talented experienced developers the guy that's directing this game directed final fantasy 5. the guy who's making the combat made the combat in devil may cry 5. like the guy who is the, essentially the project lead is the guy who's the project lead on final fantasy 14 and koji fox who is, is such an unsung hero i think he is I agree. The he is like we see him as the translator for yoshi p but he leads the localization of final fantasy 14 and he has led the localization of 16 but he's also had a hand in shaping the script. He also oversaw, led, slash directed the um, voice capture and motion capture sections, uh, uh, um, sessions, right? 
So he is a very powerful creative force in that game. And the work that he has done to localize the Final Fantasy thing, which, you know, the, the converted from the Japanese thing into an English thing that really resonates with us, he has done a remarkable job. So uh, just to be able to hang out with those people, speak to them, as I said in the video, it was very humbling because you just, you know, you these people who have done so much and contributed so much to video games. And um, yeah, it was just really cool to, to, to meet with him. Second question, and then we'll wrap. What was it like being at the center of kind of like virality on the internet when you asked the interview questions regarding the idea of a JRPG and the internet just took that and it, it yeah. went? Well, <laughs> inter yeah, interestingly enough, and this goes back to how, what I spoke about earlier, where I'm like, I was not the center of that story at all in that I was not the center of that virality. The question that I asked was the center of it. Right. And the response from Yoshi P was the center of it. And so no one was saying, oh, you did something. Skill up. No one was saying, oh, skill up, you know, had a really stupid take on that or you shouldn't have asked. Like, I just, I really just extricated myself from that situation and just let Yoshi P speak. And like, my question do its thing and I let Yoshi P's responses do their thing. Right. Um, and I was very happy with how that all went. Because as soon as he said it, I was like, this is big, right? This is big. <laughs> this is one of the most successful game makers of all time from Japan, talking about the fact that the term JRPG is low-key offensive. As soon as it came out of his mouth, I'm like, this is news. And I knew that it was going to do the rounds as soon as I asked it. And that's why I was also particularly careful to be like, okay, let's just let Yoshi P's words do the talking and then people can have the discussion they want to have around it. And I think it was a really interesting discussion. Um you know, I think some people will certainly stop using the term JRPG as a result. I think others won't. Mm. Because again, I think he kind of ended on a note where he's like, the term means something different now to him. Yep. It has more positive connotations. Personally, for me, JRPG has never had negative, inherently negative connotations. 100%. I, yeah, I, I have disliked some JRPGs. I'm more distant from that genre today than I used to be when JRPGs were essentially the center of video games. Like we're talking back in the Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, 10 days, where they were the kind of the most ambitious video games being made by many metrics. Um, so I'm less close to that genre now, but I still play Xenoblade and I love it. It's fucking awesome. You know what I mean? Um, so, and I, and I, so I personally, I think I'll still keep using the term JRPG. Because I, I respect I respect that term in many ways. You know what I mean. I, I it has it JRPGs have helped shape the person I am today, um, and I've never had those negative connotations with it. And also, as I said, because Yoshi P is like, look, it means something different today. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna be honest. You distance yourself so well from that. I was not sure what JP was talking about when he first said it, and I didn't realize that came from your interview. It was it was a brilliant so good job uh, distancing. <laughs> I think for it, sure. I heard it. I heard about it from PC Gamer, and I guess they were talking about your interview. Yes. So that's yeah, that's yeah, wild. That's right. it, that's it, really all, wild. That's right. it all came from the interview. Yeah. Which huh. yeah. it is like monetarily and business wise. I'm sure they all linked back to your video, right? So that was like a giant win. Uh, I mean, you know, so I don't, I'm uh, not necessarily. That's I a yes. All right, let's wrap. That. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, I think it was, the, the, that was one of the situations where it like, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily the source material. It was what actually happened. Like that, right, that right, right. like that whole thing. We had a huge discussion about that on my channel. Like, and, and I, right. you know, I read the first, like it was, it was, a uh, that thing was a big deal. Um, regardless of who interviewed him or who said it or anything like that. Was yeah. The, yeah, yeah. That exactly. was a huge deal. Yeah. And I look back on that and I'm awesome. like, I'm pretty proud of that. You know, like pretty it's a great like, question. We don't Fantastic. make, yeah. we don't make much news in the world of YouTube. You know what I mean? Like we are, we rely it's on very rare. Yeah. yeah. Twitch streamers are the same thing, you know, like it's because also we don't get a lot of access and that's a whole other podcast obsession we could have in terms of the <laughs> two tiered system when it comes to media and YouTubers where like, you know, <laughs> I'm fucking hustling to get a resident evil Four review code this week. Probably not going to happen yeah. uh, because again, YouTubers just don't get a look in on so many opportunities. So it's nice to be invited to those sorts of things, have the chance to um, speak to those people face to face and yeah, have the chance to make some news on occasion that's that's i like that you know? yeah we we caught uh phil spencer in an interview and had a just a very nice. small slice of that that got picked up by like ign and GameSpot and all that type of stuff uh oh, which one was that what was that i've honestly forgot what he said right. 
Uh, we okay. There was one part where he was uh, Zeke asked him he about. He was talking about Game Pass stuff. It, right? it was probably Game oh. Pass related. Uh, we yeah. went. There was a, another side of uh, viralness that came from it because Zeke asked him if rich people want free stuff from him. And he said, like, no, fuck those guys. They can buy the game or something like that. And so that <laughs> that clip went viral a little bit. I didn't uh, see that. Oh, the That's killer the killer instinct thing, too. That's yeah. The that was the, the killer instinct thing yep. is what got picked up by IGN and all that type yep. of stuff. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but you're right. It, it's access is a strange thing for sure. Anyways. Thank you so much for coming on, man. It, it was yeah, man. Uh, an absolute blast to have you on. It's what, 7 a.m. for you right now? It is. Again, I apologize for messing up Della Totally not, times, dude. That's not the worst. Yeah. We are the actual worst. No one falls for that at all. <laughs> yeah. Time zones are bad enough, bullshit. and then daylight savings on top of it. That's is right, just, I didn't even know it was a thing until Barry, uh, who does engineering and admin stuff for us, was like, all right. You guys are starting an hour earlier today? And I said, no. <laughs> and I go, oh, God, right. Skillup probably didn't think about that at all because it didn't change for him. Yeah, <laughs> no, he did not. He did not. Yeah. No, but thank you very much for having me. As I said, I've um, definitely checked in on the podcast multiple times over the years. And, um, yeah, just really um, have enjoyed you know watching you guys. And um, as I said, for years now, we've been trying to make this happen. And I'm, I'm really glad we finally got the chance. And I hope I can come back one day. Hey, not, yeah. to, not to re, not to invite myself back, but it was fun no, hanging no, out. No, I hope no. we can you do it again. You are welcome to come back as long as you're willing to get up at 5 a.m. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll wait until <laughs> daylight savings time <laughs> is finished, and then we can we can talk about. Okay. It again, we'll you know? circle. Yeah. Well, there's an army of things we could have talked about. We'll have to wait until they announce Destiny Three, uh, and then we then we can like bring you in. And we can all right. talk about. Right. Coming back for <laughs> Final Shape next year. We'll have you on for Final Shape. It'll there either be Final Shape or Starfield, depending on where oh, you fall on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Starfield. Well, yes, I mean, I'll, hell, there's a lot yeah, of games that be... are going to be fun reviews this year. Starfield. Yeah, man. Final Zelda. Yeah. 16, Ze Diablo Hold on. 16. I have one final question. Where do you sit on <laughs> Zelda? Breath of the Wild. I mean, Zelda Breath is of the wild or the new one. The, well, Breath they're... of the Wild is. It's obviously one of the best games ever made. No question okay, about all that. right, I mean, all right. So, there we go. You know, this, I, I don't know anyone that you really are disagrees welcome. with that. Oh, that's right. Good. Look, these, oh God, these everything two was going right so here. well. Was I so loved well. you. <laughs> you made me love you, <laughs> and then you ruined it. You ruined it all. Well, I have, I have the last word. I have the last bastion on this podcast for Zelda fans. <laughs> <laughs> let's do some shout outs we'll call it a show co why don't you start us sure. off uh as always a huge thank you to jp and zeke and of course a very special thank you to, uh to skill up me and skill up have have been going back and forth on random twitter things for god a long time now always always love his mm -hmm. takes on stuff and uh yeah just huge thanks for being on the show my name is co i'm currently in a last epoch hole uh we also may be playing some stalker clear sky we've got resident evil right around the corner um all sorts of fun stuff coming up so hope you drop by the channel twitch.tv slash co carnage and uh, yeah, come say hi. Thanks for watching. Zeke, do some shout outs. Yo, uh, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys for watching, first and foremost. And thank you for Skill Up. Thank you to Skill Up for being here. Um, always nice to hear the like a different kind of perspective. Like, I, 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 YouTube world is so new and so, or not new, but so like, you know, different from what I do every day. So hearing that perspective is always so much fun and informative. So thanks for being on. Uh, thanks, Co and JP, for, you know, Doing what we do every week. It's always great. Always have fun. My name is Ezekiel the Third. You can find me at or slash Ezekiel underscore I I I on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, and Ezekiel the Third, all spelled out on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, I broadcast most every day at 10 a.m. Pacific, and uh, I'm going to be starting. Uh, since it's since it's past its hype hype time, I can actually start a game. Dead Space remake. We're gonna do the Dead Space remake starting on Tuesday. So uh, if you want to come see me scream and cry and Blast some aliens. Come on down. That's what I got. Thank you very much. That's it. And finally, skill up. Do some shout outs. Oh. Sir. Where can people check your stuff out? Yes, we made a shout out oh, yes. card for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. I have a card and everything. That's nice. Um, yeah, no, uh, I'm skill up. I You will find me on uh, YouTube on the... Wait, I've lost my train of thought now. The, the card is intimidating. Um, I Yeah, I'm on YouTube and uh, do game reviews and news. You will also find the um, FPS podcast there. As I said, this week is big because we've got uh, Joe Blackburn, the 
creative director of Destiny 2. He's joining us. Very exciting. That's going to go up this coming weekend. Um, I've got my Destiny 2 review dropping this week as well. I apologize. It's an hour long. But, uh, you know, I always have too much to say on Destiny. And um, there's actually some other stuff coming this week as well. I actually have a whole bunch of other uploads, which I can't talk about. Previews under embargo for two titles that I'm actually quite interested in. So, yeah, a lot of content this week. Um, you will find it all on my channel. I'm also on Twitter, unfortunately, at uh, Skill Up YouTube. <laughs> and uh, you can also grab the podcast. You can grab the RSS feed if you just look it up on Spotify or Apple iTunes or whatever else. So that's me fantastic we will not be back next week me and co are out zeke might do a show by himself i don't know if that was a joke but he he said he was going to uh yep <laughs> i'm gonna have a couple of guests and we're gonna do i know i'm i will relish having two days off that'll be awesome there you go no show next week uh like i said me and co are out diablo 4 is happening though uh that's gonna be a, a beta uh we'll talk about that have you guys you, i played that beta by the way we did not so this is our it's very first, good. Uh, it's very good. What class should we play? What class oh, is I broken? I only played. <laughs> I don't know. I only What's played. What's the, the meta? Um, <laughs> that's right. After my ten hours of the game, tell us. Um, no, I played the rogue, and it's it's very it's very dark. You're going to be surprised at how dark this is. Okay. I'll tell you that right now. It's you like, no, like nothing turn up the brightness you. dark or like stab <laughs> no, 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 in the no, eyes. No. no, like game of, like get, House of Dragons dark. No, I mean like uh, I mean tonally dark. Okay. Uh, and I was not quite ready for that. It's always been a dark franchise, or at least one or two were, but this one definitely kicks it up a notch. Cool. Nice. All right. Well, that starts uh, Friday. I'm sure we'll be talking about it in two weeks. Thank you so much for watching Drop Frames. We are out of here. We'll see you on the 26th. Maybe we'll grab a Diablo fan or two and uh, talk Diablo 4. For now, though, we're out. Have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye. <laughs>